basically you have the five unique generation, the five unique tzaddikim of the generations. They came down Moshe Rabbeinu, right? He brought the Torah to the world. Rabbi Shimon brought the Pinimiyut, the inner aspect of the Torah to the world. You have the Arizal that brought the path within that explained the Zohar for us. You have the Baal Shem Tov that taught that everybody can do this. And the path of Katnut, which Katnut is the idea that right when I don't see Hashem, He's still there. Right? It's just in a little bit of concealment. And then you had Rabbi Nachman who taught Katnut Shiva Katnut. The concealment within the concealment. That if, even when everything's concealed, the Vadai Sham Nimsa Hashem Hashem is for sure there. And this is all one soul, five different levels of revelation. And uh Hashem, we zochet to connect to all of them. It's called Tzadik Yesod Olam. The Neshama of the Tzadik. Amen. Yeah, like Rabbi Nathan. <laughs> episode 14. <laughs> episode 14 of the two classes of the pod. Bitcoin or Bitachon? Yeah. Which one do you choose? That's yeah, which one yeah. you, you gotta pick. You gotta pick what's, one. What's, what's the answer? Give, give him a sneak peek. No, no spoilers. Both. 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 Spoiler alert. <laughs> Who's there? See, well, you're taller than I remember. Yeah, really? Oh. Two tall Jews, bro. Come on, it's not stuff. This is back. This is <laughs> Two yours. tall Jews, wow. Well, you should see the other one. <laughs> ah, he's even taller than you? Ooh. Oh, God. Six foot nine. Yeah, it's uh, Yom yeah. is about yeah. to come strong out. Strong woman. The real Yom Atmaut is uh, Motzei Shabbat. Ein Why ben is that the real Yom Atmaut? The only person that's really called free is one who's dealing with Torah. Okay. So when's Yom Atmaut? The day we got the Torah. Wow. Here first. <laughs> <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> I grew up with a camel in the house. With a camel in the house. I have a bunch of I have a bunch of good like talking points. Just stuff I was thinking about on the way here. Don't put this in the episode. <laughs> welcome to the pod. Welcome, welcome, Baruch Hashem. Another episode of two chassids in a pod, and we have Take a third one in. <laughs> Take two, yes, Baruch Hashem. We have here with us a very important Jew putting out amazing, amazing content online on this day in Jewish history. Two tall Jews. And uh, should we drop that new position? What? Sure. Yeah. yeah? yeah. The social media yeah. strategist and head of the, one of the most important organizations in all of the world, and especially in Amisa, which is Nefesh Benefesh. So, Just welcome. a social media associate, but thank you, yes. So good, I know we're, you're we're, the head. We work in a team, we work in a team. Yeah, no uh, But thank you so much for having me, it's really an honor. Welcome, welcome. Love what you guys do. Obviously, you know, we've been talking about this for a while. You guys came on our show a little over a year ago, and people loved it. Like we just Bomber shared it special. again. Like Bomber Special, 781. Um, you didn't say my name, though. Should we tell him my name? The Jewish history guy. <laughs> That's what I told my wife. First name Jewish, last name history guy. The real name is Mayor Gromberg. Mayor Eliezer Ben Tzvi. Wow. Is what I would be called if I get called up to the Torah. When I get called up to the Torah. Mayor Eliezer. Ken. Powerful. May you illuminate the help of Hashem in oh. the world. Is that the song? Amen. Thank you. Actually, reminds me of an awesome story. Go ahead. Uh, in spot, like, because my name, um, I grew up not liking it, and for like the dumbest, childish, re t most childish reason of like going to Disney and not seeing your name on the name tags, ah, yes, and being like, you know, where's mine? And then finding out that my name was supposed to be John, and like not even Jonathan. Like for some reason, I think my dad was like, let's name him John. John. And like my mom was like, okay for a day, and she was like, no, like we're not naming him that. Um, and then a couple years ago, right like, when I wait, you were thinking to change it to Jonathan? No, 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 no. My parents, the parents, they were like, yeah, let's call him. Let's, call, let's just call uh, him. Let's, call, let's just call him John. I probably was probably gonna have a Hebrew name, probably uh -huh. along the lines of Jonathan or something. But like, my mom was like, no. Like I really love the name Mayor. She actually also really loved Golda Mayor. Uh, she was like, you know, like an inspiring woman. It's good she uh, didn't name you that. Right. My brother sometimes calls me Golda. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a joke. Um, it's a nice name. It's a little, little, little outdated, I think. But uh, yeah, thank God it was mayor. She made it big. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the ice cream's pretty good. Yeah, gold's pretty good. Um, and then, so I came to Israel uh, in 2017 with a thing called Israel 2.0 program. With uh, I think I think it runs through H. 
And it's meant for people that want to come back to Israel, 2.0. They maybe they did a birthright. Maybe they did a program like mine, who wasn't really like there's no spiritual experience in Israel. It's a gap year program. Just stam be in Israel. Um, so that was like the kind of goal, the goal of the program. At the time, I had just started going to my friend's classes. He used to give these classes, and like I used to just kind of go to support him. But and then eventually, it was like I was in. We're like, when's the next class? Um, and uh, what? <laughs> and then. Over. Uh, so in that same time period, I came here and I was not sure. I was like, okay, well, I'm here. It was, it was Hanukkah. It was the end of 2016, going to 2017. Um, and I was like, well, I'm here. I'm going to put on tefillin just while I'm here. And then we had, like, obviously we had a Shabbat in Sfat. And we were up here. And I had one of those, like, cliche moments um, where I was like, I went out for a walk. The streets were completely empty. And I'm like, God, where are you? That whole day, um, I was going around, like, wherever we were doing, like, the classic touristy things. And every single time I would introduce myself to somebody, and I'll say mayor, somebody from Sfa, they would look at me like, wow, you know what it means? Like, you know what the name means? And they're like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's the light of the world, you know? It's like, okay, you know, psh, it's a powerful name, powerful name. Um, and I didn't think anything of it. So after I'm, I have that moment that night where I'm like, okay, all right, I'm here, you know, where are you? Um, I'm walking back up the stairs. I was almost down at the at the cemetery, so I'm walking all the way up the, the stairs, and I get to like one of these platforms in between the stair sections, and I see like a shadow of my body from one of the street lights, and you know it's a shadow. You don't just stop and stare at shadows, or else you wouldn't get anything done. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I stood there, and I'm like, but when in spot, <laughs> right? When in spot, and no, given I wasn't under any influence of anything. Just Stam, I was just like, I was in like a weird place, you know, I started, I started doing things, but it was weird to me because I wasn't really like understanding what I was doing. You know, I didn't fully still, you know, I didn't like believe in, yeah, um, yeah, exactly. I think it's a little bit of that. And, <laughs> and I, so I stared and I stared at this, at the shadow and I just stood there for like a minute, maybe longer. And then I was like, okay, weird. That's a huge <laughs> shadow. I mean, it was the biggest shadow I've ever seen. It was like all over the wall. Huge. And then I kept going. Okay, I kept going. I left, finished the trip. I kept up another fill in. Things kept on going on slowly. I kid you not. And this is what happened to me. It's a personal experience. Like I don't. This is you can't you can't replicate these things. And like you can only talk about it and either take it at face value or so. I'm driving. Beautiful, amazing Florida Miami traffic. This guy knows all about it. <laughs> and it's late afternoon. I'm leaving work, and the sun's in your face. You know, so you got to put down the the thing, the little, what's it called? The visor. The, the visor to, to be able to drive, right? I get into the car and I'm driving and I turn and I turn to the sun, right? Because uh -huh. I'm going west. And it the light just go boom into my eye, like fully. And I'm literally transported for like a tenth of a second to that moment where I'm staring at the thing, at the shadow. Mm -hmm. And the only thought I have in my head is that's your potential. In Florida, months later. And that's when you start taking steroids. And in that moment, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> get that so <laughs> Right. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, it's like... It's crazy because right. they say you have like LSD flashbacks, you know, and like all these people have flashbacks from drugs and stuff. But right. Tzfat is a very powerful drug. And but then, to, <laughs> sorry, to connect it to the name, yeah. it's like that's your potential and also that's why your name is Mayor. Mm. Because of the light. Very cool. Right? It was, a, it was a street light. It was the sun. And it was people saying that, you know what your name means? And then the reflection of what you, like a big of you, like right through light. Yeah, that's really cool. That's on the shadow. My my son actually is also cool talking about shadows. Like when he sees a shadow, he like points at it and he's like, "Do do," which is his own name. That's how he calls himself. Which is like he's only like one years and he two, recognizes two that he has a old. shadow. Yeah, he that's recognizes awesome. him. It's like, really cool. <laughs> I don't know. Wow, that's love kids. Yeah. It's the best. They know everything. Kids <laughs> no, it's literally every day they're just learning new so things, cool. and it's like it's an astonishment, and everything is amazing. That's why yeah. Rabbi Nachman says we and can't get still old. Pure. Yeah, because they, they stay now pure. Now to get old. No, like yeah, as we us too though on our level, right? We have to be like that kid. If you're old, you're stuck in your ways. Oh, I'm like this. I'm like this. I do that. I, no, that's how I am. That means you're old. You're not. You're not a child. You're not exploring. You're not really genuinely trying to get more you know you're, you're stuck in the way like an old also man. a lot of psychologists say like the inner child is very important yeah yeah right and it's like you have to be able to you know recognize that like 
that was you at one point and it never stopped being you just because you got older and you grew a beard right and like obviously the circumstances change but you don't yeah sometimes when you shave after shavuot you look like a kid again right <laughs> yeah it's a good point when you say like, your circumstances good... change because like literally you're the same person as right. you were like when you were like five years old just because the experiences you had you changed right you grew up right. because you saw maybe some trauma you and experienced you, and, and, you're, yeah. and were shaped and molded but you don't stop being you yeah like you know what i mean like there's not a clone <laughs> i had this a few weeks ago someone told me in most cases oh, you lost your you lost the fire that you used to have hmm. i was like i didn't i just re channeled it like right gave me four books in front of me and I'll take you on a trip that you've never been on, right? But like, I, yeah, it's not to, to go into the club anymore. Right. I want to go to the Beit Midrash. I want to go learn. I want to, Different know. club. What's the... Yeah. Kiddush club. What's the quote about, um, you know, like, uh, when Hashem, I think it's somewhere in um, Ketuvim or Navi, where he says, you know, like, uh, I remember like the, your days, the days of your youth when you ran out into the desert. Uh, like... Uh, Right. Like, like, let's go to those days where, like, you just you put everything down. You didn't even you walk have after it. me in the desert. You right, didn't you didn't have questions. food. You didn't have anything. You just left. Like, like, like the love of the youth. That's what we're talking about. That's the inner child. Hundred percent. So important. Yeah, that's why. I also, I think I really one of the reasons I think I really like comedy. It's like it's like that inner child of you, like mm -hmm. that doesn't take anything too serious. You know, mm -hmm. like when you're a child, you always like joking. You always like having fun. And it right. takes you back when you're like, I think that's why we like to laugh. It's like, it's like a place of innocence. And like, yeah. Yeah. So now you're technically a child. You're starting over. You just Is that the left. Shuba? At, uh, That's the Shuba, like. That's yeah. for sure. But you moved to Israel now. Right, right, right. Now you're Lamaaj well, in Kita Aleph here, you know. Are you um, learning Hebrew? I, like, I learned, I did five months of Ulpan. I grew up going to Jewish day school. Like, in the last couple of years, I, you know, watched a lot of Israeli TV, listened to Israeli music. What I recommend to people a lot, and like a lot of people that know me, might, you know, and they're listening to this, they might have already heard this, but like one of the things that helped me was like I would listen to songs that I really like, not necessarily Jewish songs, just Israeli Hebrew songs, and I would look up the lyrics and I would look up the translation. And then yeah. if I'm listening to the song a lot and I'm hearing these words, so I learn the words. I also, you learn like a tense, you also learn like a poetic version of it. It's like a little higher level. So obviously there's a lot that comes before that, you know, you gotta learn how to read and write and all the yeah. basics, but. I recommend doing Ulpan and taking it seriously. A lot of people in mind didn't take it seriously. It's like, what are you doing here? Why are you here? A lot of Olim don't take Ulpan seriously. It's very really important to learn the language. So it's hard. Yeah, it's a hard language. But if you stick through it, I think it's one of the, the languages that come natural to us, right? Because it only took you five months and like you speak some Hebrew. Achie, I went to, I went yeah, to Jewish go, day Achie. school. <laughs> Perfect Hebrew. <laughs> I went to Jewish day school though. I got my... Ah, you, I you mean, went to Jewish day school, so there you learned also. Already. Right, yeah. I mean, like, again, I didn't take those, I didn't take those classes seriously and... Whatever, I, I wouldn't, like, there was an issue with but the Jewish day school system where, like, the Hebrew teachers yeah. are mamash, like, it's not the best, it's not the cream of the, mm. the creme de la creme. The creme de la creme is here. Yeah. So we would get, you know, the shavings, and then these, there was, like, one really good teacher, but it was a high level. I never got to that level, mm. you know? Well, we were lucky. We got, like, in our school, like, shlichim, like, literally people from Israel, messengers, to come and teach Hebrew in our school. But did they know how to teach a language, or did they just speak the language? They spoke the language. They made you speak Hebrew only in the class, which helped a lot. Right. And they taught it really well, because they knew. They mastered the language really well, and they... And I don't know, for so some so, reason, because we're also very young, Right. we just... At the end of the day, the best way you're going to learn a language is by speaking it. There you go. So, like, you can only do so much from the diaspora. I know that this is something that a lot of people want in America. Um, I actually just saw, I was speaking to somebody who's like doing kind of a research about this specifically. They want to start classes. Um, but like, I've only had one, like the teacher, shout out to Ul, Ulpan uh, Tsuba, uh, and like the teacher I had there, you need like amazing teacher. Like, you know, that you feel that difference of like somebody that cares about you learning, mm, yeah. you know what I mean? Like my whole life, it was always like, here's the homework because I'm upset at you guys. Like mm -hmm. literally we get homework because we would misbehave. It's punishment, yeah. Then you don't learn. Must say, I'm not, I need, I'm not going to learn anything. No. I stopped doing homework after fifth grade anyway, but uh, you, well, I never did no, homework never in the first place. So. Turned out fine. <laughs> turned out fine. I, I told don't him. Condone. I don't condone. Don't <laughs> condone. Do your homework. My kids. son's going to do the, his homework though. No, I, I understand how it could have <laughs> messed me up, but on the other hand, like, I never failed the test. So it's like, if I'm passing your test, why am I going home after eight hours here to go do more? So right. Yeah, I get out of my house. This is an issue with, Jew <laughs> this is an issue with Jewish studies as well, like Gemara, Chomish, and Navi, especially, again, in Jewish day schools, from my experience. You know, I went to, like, very classic Orthodox, modern Orthodox Jewish day schools, where, like, there was a... Th 
No, I went to uh, Barzo Maimonides Academy and Weinbaum Yeshiva High School, now Cass Yeshiva High School. And listen, they are, they've got Talmudic, like they have like ra good rabbis there. They have good curriculum. But at least in my days, it wasn't communicated well to like, to like the kids that weren't fully connected. You know, like I was, a, I was one of a, of a bunch. Um, they would expect everyone to end up going to yeshiva and they like, they kind of didn't really like, they tried, they would do things to like, be like, Oh, we're going to start Hashkafa class and we're going to start, but bro, I never learned Rambam. I never learned Mishnah Torah. I never learned Rambam. That was like, when I started learning with that friend that I told you about that I started giving classes, he would always infuse Rambam and it changed my whole perspective. Learning like the, the, basics. like the basics, right? The fundamental, like that first chapter of Mishnah Torah is bro. If I would have learned that in ninth grade, I think it would have been very different for me. But no, I was stuck for two hours learning Gemara. To this day, I have trouble learning Gemara because of like oh. four years, back to back, double period, getting attendance at Shacharit. Like, oh wow, dude, they were really strict, huh? Yeah, it was wow. it was a proper Yeshiva day school. And most people that are listening to this might have had the same experience over as an eight. Like, and I've spoken to a lot of people. It's an issue. Kids come, don't come out. Like a lot of kids don't come out with like the Havatar and they have to find it themselves like I did, you know? Uh but then maybe sometimes they look at the stats and they're like, most kids are coming out fine. So yeah, it's not really there because their definition of fine is wearing a kippah and keeping Shabbat. And but how many of them are really like, in a relationship with Hashem? Chassidut as well. Well, everyone has what? a relationship. There's, there's with such no, a, like, everyone how much are they inspired had, to, yeah, like my, to grow in their relationship? Why I'm saying my rabbi in Yerushalayim, Rabbi Duet, she always brings up that he, he talks a lot about relationships and stuff. And he brings up that a relationship is standing where the side that wants at least is at. That decide that what? Once at least. So mm -hmm. like, let's say you're madly in love with some celebrity, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever. Beyonce, whatever. But Hashem is always right? going to love you more. Biva die. So then where does your relationship stand? Because you're the one that wants yeah. at least. So where is it? According so to you, where you so are. you decide how The connection is always there with Hashem, but you decide where it's at. So that's the thing. If that's a good point. You can keep Shabbat, you can learn Torah, you can do all of that and not believe in Hashem. Yeah, for There's sure. people that we see every day that wear the suit and the hat yeah. and they do not believe in Hashem. They just do it because that's what they're used to doing and it's too complicated to do it different. So yeah, so I yeah. don't know how much all of this this success because you were about to say Hasidut, right? I that's think the thing. that it's they so should include it in the curriculum. Is that too much to ask? And it's like, no, it, it is hard to ask like a very like yeshivish, like Litvish, modern Orthodox school. Like they come from these places where it's like they have a really hard time resonating with the Baal Shem Tov and Hasidut and Rebbe and like all these different things that, whatever, for different reasons that are external and they're probably misconstrued. They decide, no, we don't need to. We can stick to the, we can stick to the regular text. And it's like, but listen, at the end of the day, like that Hashkafa class that I mentioned, I actually did enjoy that. And it was a lot on the on the rabbis that they got to do that. And like that was one where I'm like, okay. Like, and those rabbis were probably also connected to Hasidut, but don't bring that within the curriculum of the school. Right. That's, that's what happens a lot in yeshivas as well. But What's so, hashkafa, by the way? Of the school? No, in general. Who, me? No, what no. does it mean, hashkafa? Oh, sorry, Jewish philosophy. Mm. So that is kind of like, that must be infused with Hasidut, no? Yeah, not always. No, to an, kind of not always. Without. Listen, Rambam is hashkafa as well. I should say, I should say, I'm speaking from a very anecdotal experience and from the four years I was there. The For school sure. has changed, they have a new building, they have new staff. Right, they've gone through a couple of heads of schools, so like I can't speak for the school now. Like I just want to make no, that clear. No, but this is a this is a problem throughout all of Jewish education in the world. It's right. Not, uh, yeah. It's not one nickel. Like, we're not talking about your school specifically. It's, I know. Yeah. Right. 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 Just wanted to say that. Yeah. No. For sure. My PR that. brain kind of goes on. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. but it is getting better though because, like, people are allowed now to learn Tanya in Ponovich and all these big. Because the yeshivas in Israel, it's going to happen much faster than in Israel. They're realizing because what's happening. The rabbis are no longer attractive to the students, right? The student, the rabbis, I, I've, I've spoken to this, uh, I've spoken to rabbis about this, and I've spoken to students in like mainstream, you know, yeshiva, the very Haredi world that's not Hasidic at all, Midnagid. What's going on? The guys are getting Rabbi Nachman, the guys are getting Tanya, the guys are getting their fix of Hasidut and Zohar and Pinimiyut from these different places. Mm -hmm. And then they come into the yeshiva. The Gemara is harder, but the rabbi can see that the kid's on fire. So, like, where's that fire coming from? So, the yeshiva world now is starting to understand, and I've seen it. I've gone back to different yeshivas that I used to learn in that where there was never any book there of Hasidut. You would never find it. Now they have them on the shelves, yeah. like, right, with the sticker. Why? Because you start to see that, like, we can't leave this out. They're getting it somewhere, and if we don't give it to them, then they're not going to have anything because they're going to be thinking they're going to be in the street and just learn. Chassid. What are we going to do? They're listening to two chassids in a pod. We got to cancel the show. <laughs> <laughs> Shlaimi, Shlaimi, what are you doing? What are you doing about you it? You have to go on the internet to do that. So. You're talking to Spotify. <laughs> you're talking to YouTube. What are you doing? 
But yeah, they're even coming to Rabbi Lipschitz, you know, like to Chabad Rabbi, like every, almost every Shabbos, there's Litvish guys or girls, one of really? the two, a big group. And they're, he's like, You're seeing it a about, lot? What, what do you think he's talking about? Like, or like Hashik Chabadit stories, mm-hmm. which they themselves don't usually have, which is surprising because me as a, as someone that learned Hasidut, I guess because you learn Hasidut, you learn to live like with Hashem in your everyday life. And for them, it's really like separate almost. I don't know. I think maybe it's like a refresher. It's different. Uh, it's, it's probably like a breath fresh of air of like, oh, I'm, l- I'm listening to something that I agree with. I've never seen it from this perspective, yeah. but it aligns with everything else I know. What's right? The, what's the and, they're, and, they're, and they're learning something new. So yeah. it's like, it's very interesting what's going on here? The Nekuda here, this is exactly the Chiddush of the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov came to say, yeah, there's people sitting, shtaking all day, learning Torah all day. And they have, you know, crazy miracles that happen to them. But you too can do it. Right? That was, that's the Nekuda of the Baal Shem Tov. That the farmer, that the tailor, that the water carrier, that they, they are the same Jew that the Talmud Chacham is. Right? Obviously there's levels, right? And but at the essence, like you said earlier, we all have a relationship with Hashem. We're all connected. So, but isn't that weird? Because that always surprises me. Like these people that are all in yeshiva, and they don't have many many Ashkenazi stories. And then me, that who like who, who is like a no, but there's farmer also working people, from his computer. They do, they do. They're just not like they're they're just not like recognizing them as when you talk yeah, exactly when you give over the story it's because you you just got a chizuk in Muna and you're not close to right. Hashem and you want to talk about it you want to get it out there and they get their chizuk through the Gemara through, Torah, through the through exactly. toiling and they have, of course they have chashka chapati it's just a matter of like no I'm not saying they don't I'm saying right, they yeah, don't yeah, recognize, right. they don't recognize it, it yeah it's about it's about learning how to see yeah. that's what my dad always says about photography and videography it's like learning how to use a camera is learning how to see You everyone can look not everyone can see it's hmm. hmm. a good, cool point <laughs> The cameraman over here. <laughs> yeah. Hashem. Speaking of the Baal Shantov, it's a, it's a yard site coming up on Shavuot. It's a good transition. You guys are probably seeing this after Shavuot. Probably. But, yeah. Does Baal Shantov end David Amelech? I had a question about Shavuot. Not necessarily the deepest thing, but I'm curious if there's a deeper meaning to the whole eating dairy thing. Because it seems more of like a Pesach thing of like trying to get the children to ask questions. <laughs> For me, it doesn't what's, make sense. What's the deeper? So. What's the deeper meaning of eating dairy on Shabbat? Good question. But first, I don't think it makes sense because if I'm eating there, I'm all night on the bathroom, not learning Torah. So <laughs> nah, you eat right. in the day. The minag, During the day, yeah. It's written. Minag, my wife just told me in the morning. She's she said she saw on a breast of uh, app that it's written. Minag breast of tzfat. It's like the minute of breast of tzvat, so they said it on the app to have a, uh, and it's not just breast of, there's other people, but it's just a breast of sight. But the minute of breast of tzvat is to have a dairy meal in the day. But, uh, so what is I think also we eat like, uh, no, everyone, meat, yeah, meat during yeah. the evening. Yeah. I've done it, I've done it forever. In the evening, yeah, yeah it's yeah, yum yeah. You have meat at you night, have meat, and but during the day, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lama. So, what is it? There's many minagim, but the, the interesting thing about Shavuot is that there's actually no mitzvah. Hmm. Right, every chag has a mitzvah. Arba, like the sukkah, you have the sukkot, you have the you have the lulav etrog. Right, right, and Pesach you have matzah, you have not to have chametz. All these different things on Shavuot. There's no mitzvah. Mm. That's why, because what is the chag of Shavuot? Torah, Torah itself. The Torah itself. So that, that's so you could say okay, the mitzvah is Talmud Torah, but it's obviously it doesn't play off like a matzah or like a lulav would. Right, you don't yeah. say a blessing. You don't have rituals around well, it. You just learn all night. No, but you say a blessing in the morning. Oh, that's nothing new. And if you're up all night, technically you should be saying... That's nothing, that's nothing specific shachar. to Shavuot, though. Nachon, that's what I'm saying. Maybe Kata Shachar, whatever, you should say it at, after Chatzot, whatever. But um, what's the idea of, of dairy? So the, the idea of dairy is one of the ideas, and Rav Morgan talks about this, that uh, the Torah is called Halav Udvash, milk and honey. Oh. So there's an idea, because of that, to eat also... Uh, milk and honey. So the honey mm. is obviously date honey, silan if you want, or okay. straight up dates. I got some nice juicy bonbons. <laughs> uh, that's what they're called. <laughs> the bonbon uh, tamar, the bonbon dates. But uh, that's the idea that the Torah is milk, right? And why is the Torah milk? That's that's the sustenance. It's the, you know, bring, build right. your bones. It's our essence. It's it's everything. It's and the, cool. and, the, and the sweetness, the, the dvash, right? Is they have the minag also for kids. The first time they go to learn aleph bet, you put mm. honey on the li- on the letters, and they lick the letters. Oh. They lick. That's the chassidus oh, minag. Yeah. Also, also Litaim, I think do it. Wow. I was like, yeah, Litaim. Cool. You put. They have a whole daf, 
they get to the cheder, the first day they're doing learning the alphabet, they, they have a whole paper, hmm. all, every letter, and they put honey on the letters. I and think the Chabad, they put the plastic over Tanya. Like, they oh, open yeah. a Tanya, I think, they put plastic on it, and then they put honey. And uh, probably that's so how we'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's uh, definitely one idea, is uh, the idea of that the Torah is, is considered like milk. Uh, cool. It's not very uh, considered to the Ashkenazim, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, that's the problem. That's what we get for like getting exiled, I guess, and becoming Ashkenazim. <laughs> it's our what is Ashkenaz? Ashkenaz means German, <laughs> like yeah, you know, yeah. Sephardic means Spanish because that's. Yeah. It's yeah. written in Amos. Yeah, you talk about it. No, not Amos. Avadia. Sephardic like Germania. Avadia, uh, Ashkenaz. Oh, Germania. Yeah. So I have a question, actually. You so, grew up more than Orthodox, and then Spanish. now would you consider yourself? You told me you consider yourself Chabad, no? Or like I would say we grew up more Chabad than Muslims. Ah, you Zarks. actually grew up Chabad. Yeah, my parents were about Teshuvot, Teshuvim, Teshuvot. Baalei Teshuvah. Baalei Teshuvah, thank you. Speaking of the Ulpan, didn't, <laughs> didn't learn anything. Sorry, you need. The Torah goes on the... Uh, yeah, Baalei Teshuvah uh, through Chabad. The Chabad of Caracas, Venezuela. Rabbi Permanen, Rabbi Shui Rosenblum from Pittsburgh. He married Rabbi Permanen. Rabbi Permanen was the Shliach. He is the Shliach. He got there in 1977, I think. I actually have it on my So on you grew day. up in Venezuela there? I grew up until I was seven. Um, and then Baruch Hashem, we moved. There was an exodus. There is an exodus. It's ongoing. Six, million, going six million Venezuelans have left. Wow. Uh, like 20,000 Venezuelan Jews. When I was in Miami, not Venezuelan, and all of a sudden I had tons of Venezuelans in my school. Jewish kids yeah. coming in. I was like, what's going yeah. on? And like literally like over a month or two, all of a sudden there's like a bunch of Venezuelans that weren't there. You know? And you also came to Miami, right? Right. South Florida. Uh, Hollywood. Not the one you're thinking about, Hollywood, in Florida. Miami, Florida. Yeah, Florida. it's like 25 minutes north of Miami, but it's easier to say Miami. Yeah, um, yeah so thank God we moved there in 2003. It'll be 20 years next year. Um, you know, thank God America has got its problems, but it definitely <laughs> saved our family. Like, you know, we're, we've all gone, we've all left. And now you escaped America. Now it's now going I bad escaped there. America, right? <laughs> God, so shalom. The same thing happens there. I don't think it will. Hopefully but, uh, not. We'll they, they sure like the <laughs> governmental model of Venezuela. They're trying to copy <laughs> that as much as they can. Thank God for the Constitution. That's all I can say. Yes. Is that the shams? It's it's one of the uh, longest living documents, and like you know, in, in in a in a government, it hasn't been. You know, one of the first things that they did in Venezuela was just completely discard the Constitution. It was the first thing he did. Wow. Because the second that you do that, you can do whatever you want. You throw out the back one. Yeah. So then it's no longer, you know, Venezuela wasn't perfect. It wasn't like it was like a perfect democracy or anything. But now like, it's dictatorship. Yeah, it just became an authoritarian system. And that's it's it. Like Everything was out the window. In, um, in the Chabur on Malchut, right? Malchut that you can't like pick and choose with the Torah. Oh, Torah is all Torah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, there's actually something else that I was thinking Simcha. about. For the record, a little behind the scenes. I, I came from Yerushalayim tonight. I live in Jerusalem. And I had to take a couple of buses, whatever. It was fun. It was... Typically, really You cool. don't... Uh, <laughs> was what? it fun? <laughs> no. It was, it was fun knowing that everything was going to be okay. And, <laughs> and the views were beautiful. Okay? You don't get views like that. That's you know, true. That's coming up to a location anywhere. Um... But I, you know, I was thinking like things that we could talk about on the podcast. I, I'm a podcast host, so my brain kind of goes there. Um, and we just mentioned monarchy, you know, systems of government. I saw this on Instagram recently. I don't want to say who said it, but um, essentially, there was a somebody made a comment about you know when Mashiach comes, we're talking about a kingship, we're talking about a monarchy, mm -hmm. and he's like, and the kid was talking about that in in terms in. It was, a, it was a post about how Israel has to be Jewish and democratic. And so this kid was saying, it's like, listen, that may not always be the case. Like right now, maybe we're trying to do that. And like, we're seeing why it's hard to do that because it's kind of an oxymoron. Yeah. Um, right. And we could get into that. Jewish, Greek. Culture. Right. Right. We're trying, we're trying to, we're, we're like, we get into that. But like, the point is, he's like, he's like, listen, what's happening right now is sustainable for the moment. But what we actually want is a monarchy. Like that's what Mashiach is. And he's like, so, and then he's like, maybe it's going to be a constitutional monarchy. Right, that the king has certain powers, but not all the powers. Kind of like the United States of America. Like the president is not supposed to have as much power as he has right now. Yeah, that's not monarchy, though. I know, I know, I know. And logically, that's not a king. No, 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 no. I'm just the half deal. Like I'm yeah. comparing it to a situation where the guy at the top, the king, he's the king, 
but he has people he works with, right? The Anshnik Nezagadol or the Sanhedrin or whatever. For you know, sure. That, right? You have this like system that Moshe created, you know, when he spoke to Yitro, which was yeah. interesting what you he said about Yitro. He can do certain things without the but permission it's like, of the that's Sanhedrin. What, yeah. Right? That's where, that's sort of the root, right? The, the sure. tribal leaders. Checks and balances. We've always, citizen. as a people, the Jewish people, you know, have always kind of gone back to that because we know what happens when one person has all the power, right? And it's kind of sad that, you know, Korach is coming up, that, that he saw, he completely misread the situation, yeah. right? He called Moshe, that guy, that, you know, monarchy, authoritarian, sorry, negative monarchy and authoritarian. Negative when it was like, it was coming out of, it was coming from such a, from such the wrong place. It's like, where's this coming from? This is not the case. We literally have tribal leaders and we have, right? Uh, like, we have a system. I'm not the only one up here. And anyways, it's God. <laughs> Right? Yeah, it's so just it's, speaking the word of God. It's just so crazy that that would happen. And he comes from our own, right? Yeah, they're cousins. So it's like, wow, right? So even if somebody as great as Korach could fall. Yeah, right? Not only that, and we he bless... brought 250 Sanhedrin with him. He brought right. the whole Sanhedrin with him against Moshe. But why do we bless his children? Can you explain? Because a lot of right, a lot of Tehillim have start with Livne Korach, right? No, well, he had children. Well, their that... children did Tshuva, right? Yeah, they had children that did okay. and then. Uh... They say Asaf as well, and that they weren't. Uh, they were stuck they weren't part, yeah. halfway, and they're still underground. They're saying, and they mm. they would hear people would hear the the words. They would say these Tehillim, and they would write it down, right? right. Something like that. Yeah, no? they, they, yeah. They don't. They weren't completely with the camp, you know. Right. <laughs> and he also got a little bit of Ruvain. Uh, but I guess the the thing I was getting to was like, do we know what the monarchy of Mashiach is going to look like, v like very practically? Or do we just know it's going to be a monarchy? Because we don't have to. We don't know so many things. If it, if it has to be a melech, we don't know anything. Right? Even Rambam lays out Ilchot Mashiach and everything. That's all like that's, that's according why. to the Rambam. And you know, still like very it's, limited. He's, he's, he learns it out and everything. But yeah, it's not like it's not like we have curriculum and curriculum on how it's going to be. Right. We we will see one of the things is Mashiach is going to come with. You know, he's going to reinstate a lot of that. That's a lot of things. That sometimes we look at like. For example, the Yanuka. I don't know if you've heard of him. Like Yanuka. No, I'm not saying it no. inside of Mashiach. I'm not, I'm not saying that. No, no, it's okay. I, I, I just think it's cute you love him so much. You mentioned him. <laughs> the Yanuka or, or, or the Rebbe in his time, right? Or these, right. It, you have a, a tzaddik that comes and then he's bringing down... It's not just Torah. When he gives a class, his books, it's not just, uh, oh, this is a nice deal. No, it's Ruach HaKodesh. Not only that, but him himself and everything that comes with the, the movement, right? Look, we're still in the wave effect of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, right? We're still in that. The wave hasn't even, like, I don't right. even know if it's climax, you know? Like, no, it's, it's anything that's growing thanks to what he did. Chabad has only grown exactly. since his passing. So the same thing with Yanuka and the same thing with all these different all these different situations. So the, what is it? Ah, it's that. Right. Also, Moshe Rabbeinu, when he came, it's coming, he's coming with that. He's coming with a consciousness hmm. to the world, right? So the same thing with Mashiach. Once that consciousness comes, not only will we all recognize Hashem, right? He, and He's going to help in this process. But then once that's clear, everything falls into a point where He's a king that is a king that is accepted. Mm -hmm. And His whole entire idea as a Jewish king is to serve His people. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Just like Hashem. There's no, king, there's no Hashem if you don't have the Jewish people. There's no Rebbe without His Hasidim. Exactly. And there's no king without the nation. Right. So His whole entire essence of being a king is for the nation. So everything is well oiled. But if you're going back to the point of uh, we do have halachic ramifications of what a king is. We do have a, a Jewish law of pertaining what a king is. And if he is meant to be a king according to those laws, then he's an absolute king, which means he can kill anybody that rebels against him. He has complete rule but do we even know what like death looks like in the, in the times of Mashiach we talked no, about Chesim uh, no no so people are gonna die Mashiach's gonna die as well it's not La La Land where we're all living for right no I've learned no. that I've learned Wait, that it's like what do you like, mean when you say Mashiach's gonna die Mashiach is gonna die it's, that's Rov Dati is that's it's like Rambam says Olam Noe Kimin Hago the world continues to act as it is what changes Dat Hashem people know Hashem now but people there's are an not, opinion that we will live forever too no, there's going to be Tchat Ametim and there's going to be Olam Abba. Olam Abba is not Mashiach times. Olam Abba is a stage after Mashiach times. But it is in this world. Olam Abba? Yeah. Yes. Olam Abba not means so in clear. this world. Not yeah. so clear. Not so clear. The whole 
purpose doesn't of this mean world the next wasn't world? temporary. Olam haba. The next world means this one, but in a different state. Oh. No, but there's Mashiach. Mashiach the is coming. The whole point of we got bodies is like not so just like for temporary thing is because he want, Hashem wants to dwell here, not like to visit. If I die, right. if I die, but there's there's. There's levels to this in Kabbalah for, for sure. There's sure levels to this. There's levels to this for sure but in Kabbalah. there's definitely an Indian of like living in this world forever in a different spiritual state. Nachon, but what does that mean? I mean what, is know this what it means, but it, it means living world? in is this it, world, is it, physically. Is it the world of Asiya? But if you ask them around, they'll tell you, especially Chabad Rebbe, that I talk to like this world physically. Nachon, but there's much more than Chabad in Am that's what I'm saying. There's, and it's, Chabad also is traced back to Arizal and Kabbalah and even Arizal. It's not so pashut. And uh, Chabad is all the reason, right? But so you're right. Like, until Tchiyat Amitim, people will die, though. Like, And then when Tchiyat Amitim happens, this is when nobody will die anymore. And that's round that, three of uh, Hasidic UFC. Thank you for coming, yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, I, no, I just, it's important. It's important that ding, we, ding. we get the message out <laughs> that it, these things are, are not so definitive. We're talking about different interpretations of the same thing, I feel. No, but right? no, all I'm trying to make clear is that because we know so little about Mashiach, I feel like it's like we, we have to step in and like fill these gaps with, and within with where that, we come from and the things that we learn. And within that, what we do know, right? What we do know is not only is it based off of what it was laid out to us, but there is nothing is definitive. Right. So that's all I'm saying. By the way, to tell me no one's gonna die. You can't say that definitively. And this is all my own interpre interpretation. Also, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> if you say that, <laughs> obviously, then that's fine. of course, that, that removes it from of the. Of course, at the end of the day, everything I say on this podcast is my own interpretation of everything that I've heard, I've learned. I'm not coming up, up with it myself, yeah. but what I've gotten from everything is that's what I got. That's what I understood from what I've learned is that at a certain point we will live forever and uh, it will be in this physical form, but in a spiritual state. Very young. I want to be forever <laughs> young. <laughs> Do you really want to live forever? Now there's the proof and the source. Forever, <laughs> Dang it in. forever, forever young. Alicia back to Keys the Jay Z. That's our proof. <laughs> they got it down. <laughs> no, but forever young. Back to what we were talking about the the inner stay child. Stay young, stay young. It's the it. inner child. It's that's the theme for the. I love it. Right. It Shabit. wasn't Chabad. It was Alicia Keys and Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> the Empire Listen, State. They say Jay Z runs the world. They say Jews run the world. But there's something in common there. Who knows? No, he's definitely a little anti-Semitic. He sings, about, he sings about it. <laughs> or listen, some Jews um, unfortunately are very anti-Semitic too. <laughs> I, I, have, I have a different quote. Yeah, then. And this is in relation quote. I mean, question. Oh, it's very. Slicha masicha. 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 Ain makom lingifa corona be otobuze. They still do this? No. Ah, okay. No, and then, and then in Hebrew, it's, it's like... We it's don't like, have buses and we don't have masks. <laughs> in, uh, in Arabic, it was like... Uh, it, uh, like... Uh, coronavirus. <laughs> I don't remember anything else. Just the one English word that... Um, so you guys spoke about with Rabbi Bortz. Great episode. Yeah. Gotta check the it out. Millennial Rabbi. The millennial so Rabbi. Um, I think he mentioned it. This idea of like... Falling down seven times, getting up eight. Mm. First of all, I always thought Dwayne Wade had that quote he'll get it he, he gets it like i'm pretty sure Dwayne wade stole that quote um because you guys give it like a torah source for it um but i really resonated with that I, like i needed to hear that in the moment i was hoping that we could talk about that like you know obviously a lot like a lot of people nobody's perfect nobody's god no. so Speak people fall yourself. i'm just kidding right. <laughs> <laughs> people fall and like but what if like in the process of falling, you're also thinking like, it's okay, I'm going to get up as in like, you're aware that you're doing something, you know, maybe it's a hate or maybe you're just not where you, not where you want to be. And you're like, you're even aware of this fact you're present in the moment and you still do it. You know, is it the same knowing it's being like, yeah, but I'll get up. Hey, I'll make the shoe. Like I'll do the shuva. Is this okay? Right. Like, is it, I feel like that's not what it's about. Like, I don't know if I'm asking the question properly. No, what's the, so what's the question? I, I got. I understood it. Understood? I can this is more of just like comments. I can re -edit, I can reform the question as well. Looking for some more, advice. It will be more more clear. Basically, Mayor's question is. Thank you. Right. You got this. We have a principle. Shavu yipod tzadik vekam. Seven times the tzadik will fall and he's gonna get up. Right. Every but time he gets up. Thinking, right? but are you I know. Let me. Let me okay, I got okay. this. I got it. I know what he's saying exactly. Okay. And I'm pretty sure I know. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, right, so we have this idea that the tzaddik he falls, he's not perfect, mm -hmm. but he gets up. Mm -hmm. You're asking, sometimes in life, I'm in a state, and it's called, by the way, to, to give you the name of what that state is called, that mental state, it's called katnut, constrictedness. Okay. 
smallness. Yeah. Yelid, Katan, the uh, child. We're all in this idea, right? Because right? right now we're at the, also the culmination of Katan before we're giving the Torah, which makes you gadol, which makes mm-hmm. you big. So what is Katanut? Katanut, on its simple level, is that I know I should be doing better and mm. I'm not so able to do it. Even though I'm so, it's so clear to me, mm-hmm. it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I'm like almost arrested, mm-hmm. not able to move, but I know I'm about to go do something bad. And it's like so clear to me. I'm so conscious right now. In my cloudiness, I'm so conscious. Like, I know it's right? wrong. I'm conscious. Right. Exactly. Right? I'm on, I'm I don't want to do there. it, but I'm still going to do it. No, it's, happening. Yeah, now, it's happening. Yeah, it's happening. Now, Sheva Yipot is not that. Sheva Yipot Tzadik mm. is after the fact. Oh. Don't fall into depression, which right. is the real goal of the sin, of the person that's the being that seduced you into the sin, Samech Bem, and his mm. wife, Lily. Right? Their goal, one is to seduce you, the other one is to keep you in depression. Hmm. Right? So now... Seven you put become that's once you've sinned, God for you, once a person sins, get up. Mm-hmm. Get up. Now, when you're going into that, it's extremely hard. It's right. extremely hard. It's not so much you can do. Katnu, the only thing you can do, it's this is the work of this week. Run to is the malchut. Rush. <laughs> exactly. Malchut. What is Malchut? I'm accepting upon myself the whole entire toy right now, and I'm gonna get up to do something. Cause when we're falling to this place of I'm about to do a sin mm-hmm. or, I'm, uh, or I'm about to miss an opportunity to do a mitzvah or I'm feeling depressed, all of it is a lack of imuna. This is the opposite of malchut. Malchut on the positive side is I'm taking on the whole entire Torah, not meaning I'm going to do it, but all 613 are kadosh. I'm expected to do them. And that is the standard. I'm not picking and choosing the mitzvot. I might not be able to do that mitzvah, but it's still emet. It's still the truth. It's still written in the Torah and I'm still obligated to do it. I might not be there and I'm growing, mm-hmm. right? That's one aspect of Malchut that I'm accepting upon myself. Two is being quick to do the mitzvah. That's the positive side of Malchut and emunah and prayer and being happy of where you are spiritually. Mm-hmm. The negative side of Malchut. That's what's happened in the first place, right? Because you're not happy. Nachon. So what's the negative side? I'm not happy. I'm lacking emunah, which means I won't pray, which means I'm because I'm not praying, it's because I'm lacking all these things, which means I'm feeling depressed. And since I'm feeling depressed, the outcome of that is laziness in all of the mitzvot that I'm obligated to do by the malchut, by the kingship of Hashem. So what do you do in that situation? You don't want to go pray Aruvit right now, or you're feeling a little bit of yetzer waking up. Mm-hmm. And you know where it's going to go, right? Bad habits or patterns. It's very traceable and you got to act. So what do you do? It's taught in all the books of Chazidud. You have to act. You actually, you actually have to force yourself to do an external action that will arouse an internal reaction. Meaning, you start to feel depressed a little bit. Get up. Put a song on that's going to make you dance a little bit. And get up like a, you know? Right. And dance and Let out like the inner a, child. Exactly. Let out that inner child. But Be like the child. not the Kleeper version. No, the most holy. <laughs> and why are you no, doing not it? Not I'm doing no, it. No, because we're, t- we're talking about kitan- what is it? Katanut. Katanut. Yeah. Katanut is like a it's like a clever oh, version of that, like the negative part of being a child. It's like when you're you know when you're stubborn, yeah. when Small you're lazy, con- when you're you know when you're like going against growth, yeah. right? Like a child, like it's really annoying when you like deal with like a like a young teen or a young child who like didn't go through certain levels of maturity that are still stuck in like because you have to grow, yeah. right? You still, you still have your inner child, but that doesn't mean right because we spoke about different circumstances, yeah. like because it's like these things are still present. So that inner ch- child is also there. Right. Child. So thank you. I appreciate that. That was really good. That, I'm gonna, I yeah, got, you, you, got, you got there. You got, you got the question and the answer. So now, but we have to understand, right? Appreciate Baal that. Shem Tov says right. that this is this is the lachatchila lachatchila riba. The lachatchila riba. You can sing a nigan if you want. It's my yeah, favorite nigan. It's my favorite. Never do it on the podcast, you know. Lachatchila riba. The Maharash. You know how it starts. Ay, 
No, it's get up and go, get up and do it. That's it's what the, amazing. That's what came out after this. That's the Indian Malchut. That's it. Get up and do it. Get up and do it. Just do you're it. So conscious. That's the thing of Katnut. Wow. I'm aware of it. So what do I have to do? I have to do something external to establish and to awaken the internal. And the thing is, right, of what the Shavi Potzadik Vikam just wanted to get this out of the Baal Shem Tov says. Yeah. Right, this is most. This is Islam to begin with. Mm-hmm. Islam Kol Maktub. Everything's written. Mm-hmm. So the fact that I went and slaughtered a Jew, it was written already from Hashem, so what was I meant to do? Right. Right? Baal Shem Tov says, if it happened, Hashem wanted it to happen. Ah, but it was a sin, it was this, it was that. That's what I was going to say, too. Say that, Kedush Baruch At the so, end, it was all God. If it happened, it was God. Like, ah, so I did something wrong. I have to do tshuva. Hashem also wants you to do tshuva. He gave you the Torah. Hmm. But in the Torah, people mess up. And in the Torah, it's written that things happen. So what? why was it in the Torah? Torah's divine work of Hashem. Right. Well, there's a lesson to be learned there. So once it happened, ah, so Hashem wanted me to look at that girl, and it, that makes no sense. And in mm-hmm. a way, that's what actually even is more dangerous. Is like not just the sin itself. Like the sin itself, okay, happened. You can move on to chew for that. But like the depression of that, like mm. oh, like the sadness that. F- and, yeah, and and it's like it's the opposite of humility. It's like actually arrogance and ego. Like oh, it's me who did the sin. It's not just God. Like you're still in that katnut. Nahan. Right, but you can get out of it. And like, okay, I sin. It's over. it's just, it's interesting that moment when you have the recognition that like the same way that like, you know, God is there when I'm doing right, when I'm putting on to fill in or I'm doing a mitzvah. He's also there when you're doing yeah, when you're doing, when you're doing it, right? He's right. fully see. present, fully involved. Yeah, even though it's really embarrassing, but yeah. <laughs> but right, the shavu pol tzadik before you did the sin is very dangerous. Mm-hmm. So the Rambam says. You're not allowed to do a sin and say, I'll do tshuva. Right. So, 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 no, right no. You might not be able to do tshuva. Right? A uh-huh. person could die in a second and they're not going to do tshuva. So leading up to the sin, there's no, right. oh, I'm be- who's the right, rabbi, I'll be Who's the rabbi it. who said, it's like, uh, I don't know if this is in the Gemara, I'm not sure the source, when it says like, um, you're supposed to do tshuva before you die. And he's like, wait, but rabbi, how am I going to know when I'm going to die? He's like, do tshuva every day. Mm. Nechon, that's, right, that's that, exactly what That could be your last day. I don't that's know the they, source. Maybe some somebody in the comments. That's why we know. do. What do we on Yom Kippur, right? Before Yom mm. Kippur, every Yom Kippur, we eat a lot, mm-hmm. right? We're meant to eat. Actually, that meal has taken me through Yom Kippur multiple times. By the way, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm literally full on Neila. But when do you that, pray? Really? When, <laughs> when, <laughs> when, when do you pray? <laughs> though? You For pray a while mincha? in the morning. When do you pray Mincha <laughs> on Yom, every Yom Kippur? When do you pray Mincha? In the middle of the day, uh-huh. right? right. What do you right, do? Right, right. You do a large vidui, a big vidui. Right, right, Why? Right. You start. If a person, it's the first one. It's not good to die before Yom Kippur. Siman mm. Galo. Ah, so we do. So you do wow. full vidui because if you choke during that meal, this is alacha. This is what's oh, wow. alacha. If a person chokes during that meal, <laughs> at least they would have gone through a big vidui before Yom Kippur. I love when we get really practical. See, this is like so. It's like <laughs> written there in alacha. Do vidui in mincha before you eat your uh, sudam of second because God forbid. You know? Remember the thing I told you? What I had one, uh, one. Uh... No, okay. Sorry, that's no, <laughs> no, no, that's not so much for the thing. But uh, Kitsu, So yeah, Tomer Devor is an amazing book. Tomer Devor writes uh, thirteen different attributes of Hashem. How we need to uh, embody them. How we have to try to be like Hashem. And one of the things he says is, when you sin, you're using the power of Hashem to sin. Right. And he takes that. So imagine you have now a friend or a son, or, or whatever it is, that you gave them something, you enabled them to do something, with, you gave them a certain amount of power, money, responsibility, 
and they used what you gave them to go against you and spit in your face. It says in Torah, what does Hashem do? He gets down on his knees, so to say, mm -hmm. right? And he cleans up the mess himself. Wow. In my head, every time I learned this chapter, for me personally, the mess in my head was always right? spilled seed. Right. God forbid, now go into a contemplation and see HaKadosh Baruch Hu coming to clean up your spilled seed. It's very embarrassing. And under, it's extremely embarrassing, <laughs> to say the least. right? It's a, it's a very hard thing to think about, but that is HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we have to be like is that. Is this the same chapter where it says, like, when you do, a, like, he he's, like, letting you live. It's like, you're yeah, spitting, yeah. like, yeah, it's yeah. the same thing. Exactly, you spit in his yeah, face, face with yeah, the yeah, power yeah. that he gave you. He yeah, gave you the life, yeah, he gave yeah, you money, yeah. he gave I'm you bread. I'm going to have to wear my keyblade this, because it's a little hot. I know we have to turn off the air because of the AC, I get yeah, it, yeah. I get it, but yeah, it's a little know, toasty. Problem. It can be Syrian, there's a lot of Syrians in uh, Venezuela. Oh, look, yeah, a lot of more Moroccans. We had a big Moroccan Aliyah. Want a hat? Aliyah, we had a big, take the hat. I used to have a black hat. All my bar mitzvah pictures are with a black hat. We, we, had, we had a little bit of a phase. Wow, you look at the young Rebbe. Oh wow. The young Rebbe. There you go. There you go. Wow. good. You know that picture? The picture, the only picture that the yeah, Rebbe, the Rebbe posed for. When he's like this. The only picture he like ever this? posed for. Like very serious. Do you have a keeper? <laughs> yeah. Basically, this is my bar mitzvah. You look like a young Eliyahu. Really? Yeah, this is my bar mitzvah hat. This is the really? picture I made for my bar mitzvah. This is how you aligned. I just, I just went to... I imagine, like, Eliyahu, like... No. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I only did that after. This is good. Two weeks ago. What does it say? Tell, tell them what it says on Jew Boy, basically, I want to bring this back also with merch. Well, That's like, really yeah, cool. We can I, in uh, school, was called Jew Boy, right? Because oh, uh, <laughs> I wore a keeper NCC to public school. So I was the Jew Boy. How was that? Amazing. Was that like? <laughs> it sucked a little bit. <laughs> uh, but I actually did embraced you get, it. After a point, because of the hatred, I became Jew Boy. And I put it on my head. That's yes. literally the beginning of my birthday wow. project. Was everyone pointing me out as the Jew boy? I went and made shirts and made hats and live strong yeah. bracelets and everything. That's and why I we're friends. Rock and anybody's really flag. I love it. That was back then. It's uh, yeah. It wouldn't happen. It's one of the reasons we're friends. Yeah. He like really owned it. That's like. <laughs> You know, like, I did the opposite when I was in school. Like I was so like afraid to be it's Jewish. A good, it's a good transition to a different question I have. Go ahead. You, said you, you wouldn't put the Israeli flag on your hat so now. I was talk. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, what okay, it's just straight up. What straight should up. the Israeli government look like right now? Like this, right now, before Mashiach. <laughs> That's like, what do we need right now? To be honest with you guys, I ditched Paul, like, fully being involved in learning politics. It's fun, huh? Like, For five what? or six years ago, like, right when, like, after one year of Trump, I was like, mm. I can't do this anymore. I really can't <laughs> care about this. Like, I was living in the U.S., like, I, I don't yeah. know if you guys were there at the time. Like, no, it consumes it your life, right? But it was a lot. Like, I was in college at the time. Every, like, not every class, but most classes, like, involved it somehow. You know, I was in a communication school so and, consuming. like, in, like, very liberal teachers. And it was just, like, really annoying. Like, at home, it was causing issues, you know, yeah. at the Shabbat tables. Like, you had to stop talking about politics at the Shabbat tables, stuff like that. And it's just, like... Right, it's a no, sore it's a right, but you know it happens. <laughs> it's like, easier yeah. to say a sur than yeah. You know, in no, our in, in our in our in our Shabbat meals, like there's like a little bit of Torah, and mostly it's just talking. You know, so it's like it's a little it's yeah, a little no, difficult in that in those settings. But like, yeah, at a certain point, we're like, let's just not talk about this anymore because it doesn't lead anywhere good. And we actually ended up talking more Torah in these cases. That's like, right. um, but like, so but the point what I'm trying to get at is like, like, I know what's going on in this country right now in Israel with everything, but I also like don't let it. Don't let it affect me, yeah, right? Yeah. Like it, it's happening. I know I can vote. I know that, like, right? That like I'm not I'm not just at the whim of some of a bunch of people in some building, you know. Like I know yeah. that like there is a certain amount of freedom here. Yeah. So like, so in that sense, like I feel fine about what's going on. But I also know that like there's a lot of issues, right? Absolutely. And like there's always you know there's always an issue. But like I'm a lo I love history. I'm the Jewish history guy allegedly, self proclaimed. And like you look back at like the history of this country and like. Like where are the Menachem Begins? Like where are the David Ben Gurions? Like people with like like real like like Beitzim, Kilu like you know like and why is Netanyahu the only person that like you can like like I'm not a Netanyahu guy but I look at what's going on and I'm like you know he wasn't that bad compared to what's happening now yeah yeah and it's like so bad now <laughs> and like he still hasn't been sent to prison which means that like clearly whatever happened there wasn't as bad as the media was making it to be. There was nothing. It wasn't right. It, it, it's not something you want a prime minister to be doing, but it also wasn't like, oh my God, to the chair. Like, it no. Worth, it wasn't worth getting into it wasn't, the situation. Yeah, it wasn't worth Like Obviously, you know, it wasn't that bad, but like, whatever. My point is that like, 
it's way worse I don't know now. what's ha- I, don't, I don't know what's, I, I don't know I don't know what needs to happen but like Mashiach Tell you now, it's, it, but m- you're saying before Mashiach. So before Mashiach, like before Mashiach. What, 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 what you do know, we do I don't want to turn this into a whole right, politics if thing. Go, if we go down, it's fine. This is all Torah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Torah, Torah also has politics, but that, in the end, like like we say, right? If it happened, then Hashem wanted it to happen, right? But also, if we stay on that right. principle, then clearly the establishment of the state needed to be how it was up until now. Da, da, da. The thing is, how long does that last, right? So we can see that things are starting to come apart, right? And there's going to be a vacuum. There will be a vacuum. Like everywhere else in the Middle East, when things fall apart, there's a right. vacuum, right? Now, what happens in that vacuum? That's the kind of question. I think a lot of a lot of the... My pushback on this idea of Zionism, Zionism, Zionism mm-hmm. there's many, many things to that. But one of the things is... one of the biggest interpretations to Zionism. Not right. But one of, the main, one of the big things of Zionism is coming back to the land, mm-hmm. And establishing Jewish sovereignty. Okay, we did that. Now what? Okay, but so, so now we're pushing what, Zionism, pushing Zionism. What about Rav Cook's what? Zionism? Of like, it's not. It doesn't end there, right? It's like it goes beyond that because the land transcends us. Like it's about coming back to the land, but then also like infusing Good these like so national religious so if, ideals. If everything is Zionism of what the world thinks and what the average Jew thinks is that the Jews have a right to be indigenous uh, to be sovereign no, in their indigenous land. Like, yeah. No, if but, but if it's just limited to that, then it's over. Well, now what? Post Zionism. Now is what? No Zionism. Exactly. Also if I understood to arrive correctly and I didn't A lot of leftists and liberals would agree with you in that sense. Of what? Like the people in Tel Aviv would say like hey that's it, we did it. We're here. Nahon. That's it. What is Zionism? Nahon. Like they they would consider themselves Post Zionist. The majority of Jew of population is Jews. Like, like that's it. You're saying. No, I think a lot of people in Israel are post Zionist, both religious and secular. We're in the sense of like, like you said, Zionism. When you fundamentally define it, and especially when the word was coined by like Herzl yeah. and his guys, you're talking about a time where like the Jews had no land yeah, other yeah, than yeah. like maybe their home. You know what I mean? So it's like um, it was about coming back to Zion and like reestablishing something. Right, and so that was done, and it's been happening, and now we're seventy-four yeah. years in plus, if you count the yeshuv, and like, and it's like, okay, so then what is Zionism now? And I've th- I've thought about this recently, actually, and I'm mm-hmm. glad that it's t- t- taking this route. I thought about a little bit of Yom Yerushalayim. You know, I was I was I'm in Jerusalem. I was seeing these things, and I'm and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, is the modern Zionism to an extent like Jews living in Yehuda Yeh- Yeh- Shamron, like Jews like. Like are these the halutzim now? The people that are going out and yes. taking the risk, right? And and right, and in a way, in a way, it is. I may not agree with everything that those people do, but like in a way, that's like that's taken a lot of like this like fundamental definition of Zionism. Because what are they? That's the thing. What do they understand that the rest don't understand? When you live in Tel Aviv, good, you have fine, everything's fine, and then you're not connected. Yeah, I'm not saying everyone's not, but if you're not religious, it's a bit of a bubble. If you're not religious, exactly, you live in a right. bubble. You have everything you but, need, and you don't get it. But when you're religious, finish my point. go ahead. Go ahead. So I just want to finish my point because I, I don't want to say I don't want people to think that like I think that you know the people in the settlements is the only definition of Zionism. I think what, that again? the people in the settlements in the Yehud of Shomron. That that's the fundamental. Yeah, yeah, like I don't. I think that that's a version of Zionism, and I'm you know I. Yeah. So long as they're minding their own business, like I'm a very, I'll be very conservative politically in that sense and be like, you know, kind of conservative libertarian part of me would be like, let them do whatever they want. You know what I mean? They don't mess with me. I don't mess with you. So like, you know, and especially because that's also our land. But so like, more than but that. like, but like my, my point is like, I also think that people in Tel Aviv and people in this bubble and the other bubbles, because Jewish Lion also has a bubble, like the it's also. <laughs> right the people we have all these bubbles i think everybody is like approaching their zionism in a different way you may not always, you know literally post zionism is a version of zionism because you don't get to post if you don't have if you don't if it didn't I happen i reject both terms i'm against okay. all those terms just to put that out there and okay. the people says that the one with the flag it. of israel well, is, it's all good. <laughs> it's the inner child it was, it was a different time the of the child, child. exactly it all goes back to inner child but i'm against both of those ideas because why do i need either of those isms when i have torah and torah says this is our land and this is where we need to live that like if i have that why do i need a According term that came torah up law. when it came up when when was herzl making all this movement when every other but he Goyish wasn't, nation in but he wasn't doing, was it, doing it, but he wasn't doing it a lot. Like it wasn't just Chironim, right? And a lot of these guys came from a religious background. No, no there's a separation though. But, Zionism, mainstream Zionism, the mm-hmm. Zionist Congress and Israel. The State there were there Israel, were there were religious Jews present at the Congress. The first, it was very Zionist diverse. Zionist Congress. They stated in the name of the body of the world, Zionist Congress, we have nothing to do with the religion and the Torah. 
Yeah. That was an official declaration in the very first meeting. The World Zionist Congress has to nothing this. to do with the Torah and Judaism. <laughs> oh, Jamie, know. Jamie, can you just look that up real yeah, quick? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so, so Unfortunately, that's... it gets way worse than that. No, uh, what? what? Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? No, you Jamie, know what? Honestly, pull it up. we should go there. Why? Because what? should we get to, oh, to the Herzl quotes? No, no, we don't. It's not only Herzl, whatever. There's been okay, so the real, the only question, the, 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 the only question I have to this. So then, how does Rav Cook get on this? Get on board? Because what's Rav Cook saying? Rav Cook is a breast of her. Rav Cook sees the Nikudat Tova in everything. By the right? way, what he, he said sees... was, he, he also said, like, like you're saying is Nikudat Tova, but he said it comes from a bad place, though. He says, what? like, the, the state is not a good thing. Like, Nik- you can so see the good the in Nikuda- a bad What's thing? the Nikudat Tova? A Jew, right? Rambam also has this. Uh, being, what was the whole thing of the Hashmonaim? Being, the, Rambam talks about it. the real celebration is that we were sovereign in our land again. Mm-hmm. That we were ruled, and then we did not take over. Ah, what happened there? Illegitimate government. Right. Kohanim are allowed, not allowed to be kings. Right, and what but happens? We, what happens after Hanukkah? Nechon, some of the worst times in Jewish history. Nechon, but in the end of the Rome, day, Rome, Rome comes to to Yerushalayim and, and Yehuda because of a feud between nechon. two descendants of the Hashmonaim who were like two brothers, and they were like, "Oh, let's invite." At the time, Rome was in power. Let's invite Rome to help us figure out who is, should be king. Rome entered Yerushalayim, and they didn't leave until they destroyed nechon. it. So the thing is, but one of the p- points there was Sad let's fact. celebrate, let's celebrate the fact that there's Jewish sovereignty, right? Mm-hmm. So Rav Cook, which by the way died 1935, so it's right, it's post Herzl, but prior to the state, right? Right. I mean, he saw the kibbutzim, he saw what Tel Aviv was becoming, Nikon, and he would and he would go and he would try and everything. And you had a lot of the Hasidim in the beginning were Zionist. What happened? Why is it now that you look at? All the Hasidim, the closest you have is Chabad to Zionism. Anything Zionist is the closest Hasidut that you have to Zionism is Chabad. The Chabad, well, the Rebbe will tell you, is not pro state at all. He was very involved, though. No, all the rest of the Hasidim no, are like, re- don't even the deal thing with is, it. The reason it was involved because this is their government at the moment of Israel. Sovereign Jewish, exactly. So that's the thing. So what happened to those Hasidim? Why did they go from actually going and hanging out in Kibbutzim? to being anti-Zionist. How did that happen? And again, the term one is second, not... One second, I don't think... I think anti-Zionist is different. No, that's what I was coming to think. Anti-Zionist is like a, a certain Hasidim are anti-Zionist. No, Most, no, no, I no, think, no, are no, not. No, 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 no. All are anti... Uh, anti yeah. means take it all down. Yeah. That's... But yes. take it all... But take it Guys, all down. Chidush, right now, this is... Most of the also it's black like anarchists. That's like what happens. How do we protect ourselves? What what happens to our to our like we need to. We're talking about people that all they believe in is protection from above. Okay, all they that's fine. I'm not, I'm not above. denying. I'm not denying the protection from above. No, Everything not, is from above. I'm saying no, is like how people, do we? What you know? We have to like be grateful for the defense that we've established about, here. No, a, isn't that no, all through no, Hashem's no. help? It's not that. It's not that. Remove the IDF. Right. It's not this. So then what are you saying? Because I'm. What is it? It is a way, though, that. You have to be on, like, it is in a way. No, it's we're just not. realigning. And it's not maybe, remove maybe the you're army, though, realign... but you're saying you remove the, say the, the establishment. You're against the establishment. Nahon. Now, when the establishment is, is not according to Torah and mitzvot, what was the pushback of the Rizal Hasidim? Back to that point. Mm-hmm. What was it? Comes 1948. Where is Hashem in the picture? Read the Declaration of Independence. Where is Akadosh Baruch Hu? Right? Not in it. Jamie, one second. No, no, there is. Mm. No, no, no. It's mentioned there. Uh, f- there are a few things. That no, no, no. Don't mentioned. look it up. No, no. No, you go, no. <laughs> we Hashem, don't want to look it up. Hashem <laughs> is mentioned in the Declaration of Independence. It is. Oh, okay. So what are you saying? <laughs> I'm saying within the Megillah, uh, look how much is Hashem. Oh, uh, okay. You get me? Like, where, where is Hashem? And that's what I'm saying in the depth yeah, yeah, of it. Yeah. Like, how much of this is infused with HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Go back to the first Zionist Congress being mentioned that we have nothing to do with Torah. So I'm still going to look that. That, please go look it up. No problem. You can check that up. I'm <laughs> quite sure on that, right? And then there's a whole bunch of these different things. One second, one second. I have here for the for apologize. the listeners. I have pulled up the Israeli Declaration of Independence in here in English. Don't read the whole thing. But I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I can do Control F and yeah. we can try to find God, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do it, yeah. Not here. Ooh, not here. Hashem. Something. No. God is always here, but not in the Declaration. But even there, he's hidden. <laughs> well, it says the people kept faith, but faith in what? Kitsu, our laws are based off. Sign- our laws are based off British one second, laws. One second. In Eretz Israel, they they do refer to the Torah. Nachon, it's very. Sefer Hasfarim, but the eternal Sefer Hasfarim. 
Can I just give a few examples? There's a few really easy no, examples. No, nothing. I mean, they didn't have to add that part. If I die, can I just give... still Jews. The oh, question yeah. is, right. what are we doing here? Oh, yeah. Can I just give a few Go simple ahead. examples? Go ahead. I just want to finish this point. That's, uh, I just okay, just finish your point. Then. When this all started, every other nation state in, in Europe, every other people in Europe was trying to make their... Thing. That was the same period that Herzl was doing what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Hasidim right. were already making Aliyah. They were already coming here. They weren't talking. They were coming here with nothing. And they were coming, like you said, the right, issue, the first Rav Aliyah. Kok, everything. They were just coming, right? Rav Yudha, Hasid, this, the Chida came out of that, all this. So they were just moving here, and people were always coming. Right. That's why I said, why do I need this term when this is so just life? So, this then is us. so then we're talking semantics, because at the end of the day, you do support no. right? having, having no. like... So then now, now this is why it comes back around, right? Because once we have the term... Because I forget the term. No, because you can't. Because now I say this to the average Jew in the world, mean, right? Course. Don't be a Zionist. Wait, what do you mean? Zionism means the indigenous rights for, for the, the, the sovereignty of a Jewish in their, the Jews in their people, land. But okay, can, people sometimes need these definitions. I do want to let you go because you have something to say. But did you finish your... That was the point, No, I right? feel like he's not finished yet, but I can finish it for you. Like, we do, the point is we don't need the sovereignty in the state to say Israel is ours. We have it very clearly in Torah, and the state clearly doesn't use Torah in so many occasions, like when they give land. For example, it's totally against Torah. So we're saying we're not for the state, we're for the land. But because there is a state in Israel that allows the Jews to come, we'll come. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay. well, we'll come. <laughs> we'll gladly come. I, like in Belgium, it's not any better than here, but it's not necessarily so the, the, good, the, the state that we want. In that, you have, you have certain anti Zionists. Let's say right. I'm not getting a driver's license. I'm not paying taxes. I'm not doing anything. Yes, that is an extreme. Then you have the same people that agree with the ideal that those people are saying. They just don't go to the extreme. They say, I can be an Eretz Israel. I'm going to use the system. Why not? Why not use the system to be allowed to be an Aries yeah. Like it allows me. Yes. And I'm not anti IDF soldiers. Yeah. yeah. I'm anti sure IDF ruling and establishment. Right. To we force spoke guys about, and girls together. We, right. We spoke about this on our, exactly. on our show together. So this is all right. it is. And I'm also not, when we'll see a soldier, we'll, we'll, we'll salute them. We'll thank them for their service. But it's about the governments, about the ones that really control the... Right. So this goes back to my question. It's like, what should it really look like? Because so, so then you don't believe in like the Joker anarchy, take it down, like... Because I feel, I feel like, I feel like there's a right. I think we can agree that there's a lot of things that Israel does right, and there's a lot of things that Israel does wrong. For sure. Right, right. when it comes to like living a Torah life, because like agree, at yeah. the end of the day, like you know, most things are closed on Shabbat. People have to sort of like. No, but, but then if we go back to the big. No, but I'm saying like. But this, he agrees. He says this, some this things country, are wrong. Some things are this, right. This this country is not like other countries. Like no matter how secular it might seem. But the status quo is changing. That's the problem. Status quo is changing towards... It was already not so good. Right, right, right. It was a very condition. The fact that yeah. yeshiva guys don't need a draft to the, tor to the IDF. Why was that? Right. David, we talked about this again right, in the right, podcast, right? right? Yeah. David, uh, that's what, for Gurion people that didn't know, by the way, that's what used to be the status quo in the beginning of the making what? of the state. That what? Many people don't know that, what? that Harini didn't have to draft. No, so but why was that the case? Because so the Chazonish had to go and fight David Ben-Gurion to... Hey... They just slaughtered all of us. We don't have yeshivas. Now you're going to force us all. We're going to forget the Torah. So that had to be fought for. Shabbat had to be right. fought for. Chametz had to be fought for. Why is this not? So, okay. And just to, I want to, this very key point. Yair Lipid, Shem Roshayim Yerkav, may do tshuva speedily. He, long family of, long history of hating Torah and, and right? But he said a very important point that all the Haredim in this country and everybody that thinks along the same lines of we're not Zionists, we are Jews, and there's a big difference, right? Everyone that thinks that, where are you? When you were just a minority, you can protest all you want. Now that you're becoming a majority, majority, you have to do something. You yeah. just can't complain all the time. And it's not about tearing the government down. You can't complain. But who's the Haredim now that are starting to learn Ilchot politics, right? The Alachot of making a, a nation. No, the of the, there were a few people that started to establish this back in the day and gave up on it because of Zionist ideas that were. So, do you over. think? Do you think that uh, the state of Israel is uh, Rashid Geulatenu? Like, do you think that this is like 
do you believe that like what ha- what is happening like what's happening now is unprecedented we have to like understand yeah, that like sure. the fact that we can have it's this conversation the in spot, the plan, like the sure. fact that we're here right. like both of you served like we're literally oh, right this is like this it's it's it's, it's ha- it has a ton of issues and this is what we're talking about right There's, i see things in a certain way you guys see things it's in a funny different way. all i say is that it's not medinat israel's rashid geulatenu uh, the fact so that all the Jews after 2000 years are coming but back to the I would say the what's, Holocaust. What, so what comes for the, the no, chicken no. or the egg? No, if, if you ask the me. The Holocaust is Rishi Latino. I can, talk, I can tell you four different Holocausts that happened before this one. The answer is in our This one just happened in our time. 1700s when the Hasidim started to come right. to Israel. That's way before the Medina. 1700s. We're talking about it. Okay. Literally nearly every Admor. Okay, but coming here and being at the whims of the Turks or, or dying of malaria no, or like, it's our you know. And we started coming back. But like like you said, I'm saying the settlers I, I, that are going into Yudav and Shemar because uh-huh. no one else is willing to go there. Right. And they say, this but is I guess our all land. I'm asking for is maybe give like the Zionist project a little bit of credit to what's happening here. Like literally the draining of the swamps, like the building of the cities, like Bivadai, right? 100%. Nefesh Benefesh, like Nefesh Benefesh and, and everything, right? It's not just Nefesh Benefesh, it's the Sochnut Yudi. Like these things. They don't, we, we are not bringing people back on Kanfei Sharim without all of these sure systems. Right. I made all that yeah. with Nefesh Benefesh. The gratitude right. is there. I appreciate so, I yeah, get that's, it. Yeah. I'm not trying to tear down the Israeli government. I know okay. we will be taken over by the Arabs in two seconds without Yeshua Hashem. Right? right? I know the IDF without that. I know the doctor. Right. I know showing up to work like I try to do every day. That, why do I do that? Well, I could sit down and if I really, my emunah was high and that is the actual reality of it. Mm-hmm. If your emunah is rocket high, and we have Ram Tuvia Liebner, right? One day just decided, I'm stopping everything. I'm going to the Torah. Now he's a Rosh Kolel. He has this. He's everything. Bo Hashem. You know, sort it a bit. Why? Because he took the dive and he believed in it. We could do the same thing. It's not about tearing it down. But by giving all the credit for all the things the Zionists have done, right. David yeah. Ben-Gurion shot a boat of Holocaust right. survivors coming to fight for their land. And he shot at Begin. He shot at Begin. Begin was on the boat. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> with a whole bunch of Holocaust survivors and never that are coming apologized. to fight. Never apologize. As, right? And we all look at him. It's well, crazy. we don't, but a lot of people look at him. As, yeah. Right? So, so there I can agree with you. There I can agree with you. The, 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 like, the, the, the almost, 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 yeah, the, the, the almost Something the worshiping. Yeah. Almost yeah. like the worshiping, the worshiping of the Zionist project. Of course, for me, that's that's problematic as well. Like, I, f- I feel like I'm very centrist in that sense because, like, and I spoke to different people, and I, I, this is another thing I wanted to speak to you guys about is like, I feel like sometimes I'm smack in the middle of like the Tel Aviv <laughs> bubble and the Yerushalayim bubble. Yeah, I resonate, I have friends on both sides. Like, right, I, you know, I struggle with a lot of things in Torah and Yiddish guy, which is where my question earlier came from. Like, there's a lot of things that I'm not there yet, but like. Uh, if you told me five years ago I'd be putting out to fill in every day and like and like striving to learn, you know, looking for chavrusos, I wouldn't believe you. I'd laugh at you. If you told me when I graduated high school I'd be doing that, I'd literally be like Sounds like a healthy journey you're going through. If you told yeah. me when I was drafting to the army that I would think the way I think now, not religiously, about Israel, I would never believe it. Right. We all but one have of, experiences one of, that one shape of the and interesting the, thing and our is, beliefs right? constantly change also. Right. So you have people that go through the IDF that are super soldiers, right? Super soldiers. And they've, they've done like really amazing things for Amiso because of the fact that they were a combat soldier in the IDF, right? And they saved, literally saved lives. And then they go and they join Breaking Silence. Right. And their whole entire life mission goes to, oh, I was in the IDF. I saw it from inside and I know how nasty it yeah. is. And now I'm going to talk out of it, right? Which a lot of it is extremely ga- exaggerated. Yeah. I also had my eyes open in a similar way, though. I will never go out now and be pro-Palestinian. Right. I'm not going to throw it back in the nation, in the face of my nation, because I am part of the nation. The reason I see these problems, I can ident- with, yeah. identify with Zionism, because I see it as such a small slither that is so, it's just like, it's like, you know, sometimes people say like, why is Hasidut not just the same as Torah? Why does it have to be Hasidut? I get that. Mm-hmm. And, but also the Hasidic Rebbe's also when they write their books, they get that. Mm-hmm. First things for Shulchan Aruch and all the 613 mitzvot. And then contemplate like this when you start to eat. Right. Right. First things first, be a Jew. And then add all these nice ideas of Hasidut and of deeper meaning. So it's the same thing. If, I'm, if, if we are promoting Zionism, which a lot of the times is being promoted to not religious people. Because mm. the more religious you get, the further away you go from Zionism. That's right. that is a that's a fact. In, is it though? Is it, it though? is hundred percent. So the people that are showing up at uh, Yom Yerushalayim for the flag march, what's going on there? Ah, okay, no. So then like we're talking with, about Kiva Suga, like a lot of the guys that are with the Shomron are very Zionist. Bivadai. What day? Which day? 
you have Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim. You had a flag march, seventy thousand people showed up. It was Yom amazing Yom to see. Yomatzmot is a different story. You have right. Yomatzmot is just people getting drunk. You have this um, right during the Omer time. Oh. You're, which is totally against halacha, by the way. Interesting. Well, what? So is also, uh, uh, isn't it a minhag to be in mourning? Yeah. So you're not allowed to party. You're not allowed to listen to music. There's all right, right, right. But that's that's not halacha. So, yeah. Is it, it doesn't it come from the Rabbi Akiva? No, no, this yeah, is but you should. Oh, this, yeah, yeah. this is accepted by the majority because I, I always minhag. thought it was a minhag, the music part. But, but min, when minhag is uh, accepted, like wearing a kippah, kla, kla, kla wearing a kippah kippa is a minhag. minhag. Yeah, yeah. But you're not allowed to take four steps without having your head covered. Because of like a halacha klali or something like a, when a minhag, because, minhag, because, because halacha, minhag is accepted Torah. by the majority okay, of Jews. Okay, I didn't know that. Interesting. Okay, right. Kids, so the. Ah, so what is what is religious? What is religious Zionism? Those guys. Right? Yeah. There's also you can ask a lot of people within. Uh, what was that movement? Was it the Mizrahi movement becoming more religious? The meaning that was it the communist kibbutz, kibbutz movement being infiltrated by Rav Cook's Torah, which took communism and the meaning which bring Zionism to religiosity, mm. or was it religiosity coming towards Zionism? The truth is, it was it was Zionism coming, coming towards to religiosity. religiosity. So now, when you have it really grew after 1967. No, so now when you with have Rav a, son. when you have a stira, and I part of this yeshiva. By the way, I went to Bechor Meir. I went to exactly religious Zionist, mm. like one of my yeshivas I went to. And I walked in, I saw two big Israeli flags. I was like, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll survive because <laughs> the place was so so, so, so I have a Again, I realized, flag on my head. <laughs> I realized how amazing the Torah in that room was. That I can put this nonsensical thing aside anyway because for right. me it's not my judaism not defined by zionism so again what is this thing so with the religious that's zionism? It though, right you just said it like i think that if like if people are going to take away a message from, from this conversation it's just like you know you have to understand that like no extreme is good so like don't give zionism too much credit uh give torah and hashem more credit like, like recognize what's happening recognize that like these things are happening within a framework of existence yeah. Nahum. Right, that it's like, thank God that these these things are existing. Thank God that For we're sure. able to like, you know. But then also hold Zionism accountable, so when that it goes against so, right, so that it becomes what it's yeah. what it what it like what it's meant to be, or Yom Yerushalayim. And again, because it's like, Nahum. like even the Rebbe, even the, the Rebbe Lubavitch said that what happened in 1967 was a miracle. Yeah. He called it a miracle. Sure. So it's like, and when you read about it, I highly recommend the book by um, the former ambassador or in. Um, What's his name? Um, Orange. Uh, yes. Uh, but what was the issue then with Yom Yerushalayim? I didn't understand Orin. that. What's the how whatever? There's issue? there's one of the ambassadors. Uh, for, he wrote a really good book about 1967. I'll get to in a sec. It's about this. How and and like you're just reading, you're reading about it. And you're like and it's like it's this is just miracle after miracle. They don't learn. This is the thing in military schools. In military schools right now in America and around the world, they learn about big, the biggest conflicts in modern warfare in order to understand how to fight, right? You look at different wars. 1967, the Six-Day War between Israel and Jordan and Egypt and Syria, right, and, and help from other countries, particularly the Soviet Union, is not learned in military schools because the victories don't make any sense you can't learn strategy from miracles right it literally the, the generals say it's a miracle there was a miracle what happened and we can't learn because it won't happen again that's what that's what they say in military school the if I die. <laughs> now what so, happened after the 67 though but one second before yeah, we get yeah. there uh what, what was your question about your initial line like you said i said like like knowing the 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 the, root, the the boundaries of halacha when it comes to Zionism, like you know, I said, you know, smooth, and you said you were saying, why, how is it that you how is it that you have so many people? I was saying the more religious you get, the further away you go from Zionism. So, so young Yerushalayim is closer to to Yiddishkeit because yeah. we're literally celebrating getting Yerushalayim. Yeah, yeah, like sure. if we're talking about Rish, uh, Rashid the first of our of our redemption, you we really have to have control. We have to control. We have to have control of that city if we're gonna build a temple. Or if the temple is going to come from Shemai, like the there are certain hand, steps that need to happen. On the other hand, away from it because no, because at the end of forty eight, what happens? The end of forty eight, we're, we're celebrating Yom Atzmaut is the end of forty eight, which is a ceasefire land that divided the city, mm-hmm. right? It's we had barely barely defensible borders. The day after the war ended, you had Falu, uh, it was it Fedayin, which is the original jihad coming from Gaza and Egypt and Jordan, and, and they never stopped coming. Mm-hmm. The border wasn't the border like Basically, it is today. Until this day, That's what led to. Right, we're still struggling for it. I mean, this this year was unprecedented, though. 2022, 5782. Okay, yeah. Thousands of people went up to Harabayit this yeah. year. Thousands of people went to Harabayit. 
how tens of thousands of people marched. It was beautiful to see. Hamas threatened and threatened and threatened and didn't do anything. Why? I read about it last night because the Qataris even said, if you do anything, we're going to take away your money. The Europeans told them, don't do anything. Or we're like, we're literally like, like you're screwed. You're and like, and like Hamas was like threatening up the wazoo. Meanwhile, last year, they attacked them like... Anyom Yerushalayim. Yeah. They shot rockets at Yerushalayim, Al-Quds, right? Their famous, their holy city. They shot rockets at their, at their own holy city on Yom Yerushalayim. And that's when the war started last year. People forget. And, yeah. they, were, and they were threatening to do it again. Yeah. Right? It's a month apart because of our sure. bet this year. So like, um, so I think Yom Yerushalayim is a little bit closer in that sense. And a lot of the people that you see marching, right? And there's also a lot of bad it's things. Also and Navi is here to okay, cool. I didn't know that. Um, there's also a lot of like, you yeah, know, you things, that I, things that I don't agree with that happen on this march. Like, I don't think we should be yelling at... I don't, I don't, I don't understand why you should be yelling at somebody that like they should die and like their house should burn. It's like saying that's they yell this at the Arabs and then you have like them there's a lot of there's a lot of like I, I remember when I came for the Parades first time in general are not Jewish so much you know like there you go you have, I remember like when I came for the first time 2014 went to the parade it was very chill like you never saw the things you kind of see in the news there were a lot of like you Did know you go bad look time? videos I didn't go I didn't go to the old city no that's why that, no, I don't, yeah, the old city is always what you described I, no, going right, I don't right I don't yeah and, I, for me like I can celebrate on, on Melch George Street there's a there was a concert I, I, I was with some friends you know like I was just kind of riding around it was nice to see it was nice to be there for but no I didn't go to the old city because also like I don't I don't I don't in the sense I kind of resonate with like the, the you don't want to call it non-Zionism I kind of resonate with the idea of like I'm not going to go to the old city because I, what are we celebrating? Like we have the city. Yeah. But like, we still don't have Mashiach. Like I don't want to, I don't want to like celebrate this day to the point where like we, we I'm have taking it. a pilgrimage. We don't even have Harabayit. Right, 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 right. The, the place we're most embarrassed every day is on Harabayit. Like, it's like kind of celebrating like, like it's like we say, Yom Yishana Bab, Yishalayim Bab Nuya. Right, right, right. We're, we're celebrating, celebrating like half, half we're half, we're, we're, yeah, we're there, we're not yeah. there yet. But like, but I do think that like what's happening now is the first step towards that. And it's, it's going to take a lot from us to it's like, like the pregame. <laughs> right. The pregame is always, sometimes it's more fun than the, yeah. than the game. But how about this? Next year, you just drink so much and you don't sell it. You just drink and then you hopefully the next day. I think you're day, describing you know, poorly. <laughs> and then hopefully the next day, Shushan Mashiach through. comes and you're ready. You're half pregamed and then. Yeah, it's to, uh, to really so it's, Hallel on Yom Yerushalayim and Yom Atzmi. Yes, yeah. or no, 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 no. <laughs> all the halacha says pretty much all the halacha says no. That's that, see, that's the thing. All of these things, when you go into like again, we call, say Hallel, we say Hallel on Hanukkah, huh? we say Hallel on Hanukkah. If it died, it was a miracle that happened in Eretz Yisrael. What about so the 1967 was a miracle, wasn't it? We no. did get the so should we say on Yom Yerushalayim, not Yom Atzmaut? If anything, by that logic, if by anything, the logic, then... we had to be Yom Yerushalayim. We should say Yom. So we should say hello. No, no, because we had to be Tam Mikdash. We weren't into Big Tam Mikdash. We lit the candles. So that's a that's a big it. difference. That's a big no, difference. that's a big difference. But like I'm just saying, if we're talking miracles, Niflaot. You know. yeah, but near miracles happen all the time. It's about specifically right. that we got the Beit Hamikdash and we got the candle. It was pure. That's what we're celebrating. True. No, no. I, I'm just playing devil's advocate, <laughs> Zionist advocate. He doesn't need. <laughs> I know you're doing it. But... It's a, it's a very, it's a very tricky thing. Most of Judaism is a paradox. This is another one of them where we see that definitely. Listen, in the end of the day, it's we're sober for this conversation. Right? Oh, anyway. one, of, one of the psukim that comes up for this, right, is <laughs> Utsu Eitza. You know this, Utsu Eitza. No, Utsu Eitza. No. The root of You said no to this. To, uh, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> Never know to Arak. Right? The Chabad Nigga said, Utsu Eitza. Right? I think a nigga is in order to this. <laughs> they, they, this whole Pasuk is they have a plan. They make their plans against us. Uh, they talk and they talk. Ah, right. Al Tira. Yeah. Al Tira. Well, Hashem's with us, right? So now, oh, now if we really go back, and you're, I'm going to challenge you on this because you're the Jewish history hub, right? Learn Allegedly. The, learn the history of Zionism from the religious side and go look back at the things that bothered the religious people in Israel in the beginning of the state, right? Removal of Torah, that it was not meant to be a Jewish state. It was meant to be Jewish people coming to a land, not about Judaism. Right? Can I? And then yeah. now look at what happened yeah. since it started, right? 
Hashem yeah. has flipped everything that they set out to do, make a communist state with kibbutzim and everything against her. But that's... Set it out to flip it back on them. Where now, if you really want to be a Jew connected to Torah mitzvot, it's mainly only happening in Eretz Israel. The Haredi population is growing to the point where the Zionists are besides themselves, don't know what to do yeah. with themselves. They try to say, oh, you're not drafting to the IDF. They start to draft to the IDF, they become officers. They start to make sanctions against them and they make their life living hell. And I know this from first hand experience with friends like uh, they're going through this now. That they were told, yeah, yeah, we want you to succeed. Now they're growing up in the ranks, and it's like, hold your horses, you know. The, the all the plans that they kind of set out to make, besides the fact of Jews coming to Israel, which was beyond them anyway, right? It's coming back on it. Mm. So the gratitude, yes, for the things that are going right, but you see where the where the evil was clear in what they were saying. It's kind of being flipped back onto them, you know. Can I? I don't. You no, say, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Evil was intentional, is what he's saying. Okay. Have you heard of Achad Ha'am? Yeah. Asher Ginsburg. Yeah. So he was a contemporary of Herzl and all these guys. He actually hated Herzl, and one of the reasons he hated him was because yeah. right? What culture. did what did what did Achad Ha'am was culture? Right? What did yeah? What did Achad Ha'am believe? We don't have to create a Jewish state. We have to create a state for Jews. Right. He didn't. He believed that. You should not move until you are refined as a Jew and you've perfected yourself as a Jew and you've learned what it means to be a Jew, right? He grew up actually Chabad. Who? Uh, Asher, Asher, his name was Asher Ginsberg, but I, he changed his name to Achad Ha'am, uh -huh. like one nation. Um, and the, the his idea was creating a state for Jews and he really didn't like Herzl because he's like, this guy Herzl is just pushing for people to move there aimlessly. And it's like or Uganda, right? As Catholics, and then and then and then he and then he proposed that, and the non-religious Russians walked out of the room. The Bund walked yeah, out of the room. Eastern uh, Zionists and left who, and Western. And when they said we were to Uganda, like the guys that technically should not have cared, cared. So and then it was like scrapped completely. Yeah. But like the what I I love Ahadab and I have him quoted on like a couple of our like our pitch decks for you know Jewish original media which is the umbrella brand for the podcast and on this dangerous history and it's and it's I, I, I wish I knew the quote by heart I haven't seen it in a while but essentially his idea was like you like the land of Israel is a very particular place and it you know it's it's not just anywhere in the world because if it was anywhere in the world then we wouldn't want it to come back we would have just stayed wherever we were right barring all the genocide mm -hmm. and like expulsions and all that stuff so but the idea is that like once you come here it's a different ball game brother like you're you know you're, you're playing a different game you're in the big leagues now sure and it's like it. yeah and it's a struggle and you have to go through it and it's like and it's constantly reminding you right like being on the train and being asked to, to <laughs> daven mariv when you really don't want to Right, but you do it anyways, and then some, and then when you're in the middle, you're like, I feel I feel pretty good. I did this, like you know, like this wouldn't happen, and that wouldn't happen anywhere else, right? I don't know if that's what Achad Am was talking about because I don't know if I'm sure he imagined a train connecting Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, but like the the point is, it's like you know, I think it's really important right now. I mean, this is a message for if you're in the U.S. or wherever in Europe or Australia, or South Africa, like wherever you find yourself as a yid, like perfect your Judaism, like spiritually culturally religiously like try to do the most you can from where you are and then come here because like once you come here then and, and and you're not at that level and i'm not saying become like super religious i'm saying like like learn your what it is to be a jew learn right le learn what it means to be a jew and learn where you come from because that's going to help you where you're going that's what we try to do with on this day it's like I have it on the on the on the bio. It's lessons from yesterday for tomorrow. You're saying do the opposite of what Herzl said. Don't come aimlessly. No, f right, right, and and I think that like it's just to find a balance between. I think firstly back to my centrist like position. It's like you have to find a balance between Herzl and Achadam. I think you really have to like because at the end of the day, Herzl was just like also like go like right. They used the word colonization at the time because that was the, that was the lingo, but they meant just like like live in the land, like move immigration. Nowadays it's immigration, and then it was colonization, and like so where you are, you know, find a Jewish community, if even if it's an online community like with us or wherever, like learn learn a little bit of Torah, learn a little bit of Jewish history, like learn these things, and then come here and like have a much better experience because then you'll just be moving anywhere. Right? It'll just be like, 
why would you come why would you come here it's if you don't if you don't want to have a connection and i'm not ta- again i'm i know i agree you have to have a spiritual connection but also like a connection to like the culture the jewish culture and the israeli culture like understand that like it's 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 different here and like you don't you have... last here if you don't have that though that's the thing you, right. we have, i've had you know i've been here 12 years i've had countless of friends make aliyah and leave why because if you're looking to be successful in life to make money to pursue a career better to do this <laughs> there's so many better countries and you could if, also do that here you just have to have a certain mind the thing is here you have to give up on everything else especially if you're in ole if you're coming from a western country you have to give up on all of that for the fact that Israel is more important than everything. But and if you don't do that, it's very possible. Yeah. Like for me, there is no reality that I move out of Israel by choice. There is, I can say that wholeheartedly. I know that enough about myself. I will never make a wholehearted decision to leave here because of an opportunity. I don't care how good it is. But I do have to agree with him because like... Like you were saying, it is possible. You can be successful in Israel. And there's many people that mm-hmm. become successful. Nahan, right. But, right. Career. but you need to be, be okay with living very not so luxurious in the beginning of that stage. Because like in the US. Or, or like, even then being taxed like crazy. Right. And not being like yeah. the, the car that cost $40,000 in the US cost $200,000 here in Israel. Right. Right? So That's then, also yeah. part of it. But you, you pay that price because you're a Jew and you know that this is home. Right. And if you're not aligned with that. I mm-hmm. never understood it, right? Like that, for example, the Palestinian that what? says, this is my land and I'm going to die for it. Okay. And the Yid that says, this is my land, I'm going to die for it. Mm-hmm. They both look at the leftist in Tel Aviv and look at him at the exact same point and say, who the hell are you, bro? You're part of his nation, but you're telling me right, I'm right. 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 And bo- that's when Pick the extremist and the Palestinian and the extremist and the Jew, which they're both going with their emunah, they come together there at that point and they both look at that guy if the Palestinian takes over, they hate traitors. Traitors in the Palis- in the Arab world mm-hmm. is saying that... more likely that two extremists will have a beer to get in in those. Right, that's that's <laughs> the that's the horseshoe theory, which is that... well, like politically, uh, uh, like when you look at a like a political spectrum, it's supposed to be a line, uh-huh. but the the horseshoe theory, which technically hasn't been proven, which is why it's still a theory, is that the two extremes meet like a horseshoe close. because and, and in a way it was proven by nazism and and, and sovietism because they both you they know were enemies they, they were enemies on the battlefield but when you look at the politics when you look at the like the political theory of both they're, they're basically similar. the same yeah. fascism isn't the thing of the right fascism is just fascism is, is authoritarianism with a different word right so uh, what's his name? Stalin yeah. killed 10 million people after the Shoah like, that's why you said what you said earlier like both extremes are bad 100% right and like and you don't necessarily need, and I don't think I'm I feel like I made myself to be like this crazy centrist but like you know there's I just feel like it, politically I there are certain things that are like intuition for me there are some things that are experience there are certain things that are like educational you know I think that my political my, my like my it's, it's also kind of connected like you know your your i think your spiritual connection in a way because it shifts for sure as right there's the there's also a spectrum in that sense i'm not saying there are different spectrums but there is a spectrum in that sense and it and and it's something that's been come up multiple times is like how you know your experiences shape that um and also like like again back to history like history doesn't repeat itself but it rhymes Right and and this is Jewish history guy just said history does not repeat itself. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> it rhymes. Ah, so it's not the same event, but it it, rhymes. it fits so well with the event that Correct. happened. Correct, and, and that's and this is something that we were talking about before we started recording is like with Jewish holidays in the Jewish calendar, right? the Hebrew calendar. Mm. You you speak about right? It's a spiral going up, <laughs> right? And you speak about like if there's a circularity to it. That what happens on Pesach you can feel zman chirutenu, right? On on Shavuot zman Torah uh, matan matan toratenu, and Sukkot it's Right, you're yeah. talking about this point in time where the same energy that was felt at the first Sukkot, at the first Shavuot, at the first Pesach, you could tap into that. So that thing, the same thing, obviously, is happening in regular history, right? So when when things happen and we and we see the atrocities, right, and then and then and then we don't learn from it on a very individual level, we can relate because we do all the time. That's back to our conversation about sinning, but on a, on a societal level, you hope that you can learn from your past. Right. And people yeah. do learn from their past. And I think that, thank God, a lot of countries have, others have not, others don't care. 
Others would do it every, like, you know, you don't have to look far to the war that's still happening that everyone forgot about, yeah. right? In in the Ukraine. It's like, like, the other day about it, like, it's weird. Like, there's nowhere That's to still happening. Yeah, Ju- yeah. June started, guys. Right. <laughs> Can't talk about it during gay pride. Uh, yeah, blue and white, blue and yellow flags switch to the rainbow flag. That's it. It's, all, it's what's know, trendy. So I'm not it's saying, like, what's happening there is awful, but, like, um, humans have very short-term memories so i think that at the end of the day don't relate too much on uh uh, like governments and institutions to be there for you like focus on your individual focus on your community focus on your family like do your best to like make the best out of that and learn and teach in your circles because at the end of the day like that might all. That might be. That might right. I did. Like you might just be you in the room alone, and right, Hashem, and maybe your the gun you got strapped to you. Like God forbid, in these crazy moments. Like I'm talking about. I'm talking about an extreme moment, but like, um, we have to like do a better job. I think of like building uh, these communities and then extending and trying to like bridge because there's a lot. There's a big divide, and this is something that I we've agree. kind of just. Skirted, but it's a big divide in this country. I agree on, on more things. Every Jew it starts in the individual. Sorry, yeah, no, 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 <laughs> for no. sure. I, I think it's really important. I'm very good. We're saying that I have to bridge because, like, we li- Jews, we like to argue, but like, if we if we put it away the argument, like, on the rest, we agree. Like, 99% on everything else, we have that one point. Or usually, with everyone, we like disagree. Okay, with the leftists, I agree on this, but like, on the other things, like, we all want good at the end of the day. We all want everyone right. to be happy. And even the Palestinians, to an extent, but a lot of them can't even talk about it. They literally can't speak, or yeah. else, or else their family will disappear, or yeah. they'll disappear. Yeah, it's so, it's like, we don't, and we have no idea what's going on in Gaza. It's like, right, you again, back to the institution and, and these people, these, these people in power that want that like the status quo. Right, there's a lot of issues with the status quo, and it's like, you know, I um, Yossi Klein Halevi, amazing author, one of my favorite uh, when it comes to like learning about Israel and Israeli history, and he, I, th- I don't know if it was him now. Now I'm like, I might be butchering it. He has a really good book called Letters to My Palestinian Neighbor, where he's basically speaking to this like fictional Palestinian neighbor, explaining to them like, what is Yiddishkeit? Why are we here? Why do we care about being here? This and it's, and it's not, yeah. And it's not that we ca- and it's not that we're here to like make your life miserable, and it's like and at, and at the end of the day we're neighbors and he's seeing him from across the fence, and it's a really really good book. I just got chills. And yeah, and it's like and it's one of the things that like Rudy and his guys talk about how like we both love this land and it's like so then how do we like how can we align that? But the 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 point I was trying to get at is, he, I don't again I don't know if it was him I don't know if it was a different author uh, but he said uh, like. But, uh, he calls Oslo like the terms of the Oslo agreement that created the situation that we have now. He's like before uh, before peace, when there was peace. Yeah, right. Fun. Because back then, it, like at least you like Jews. The only the, the only Jews that Palestinians saw weren't soldiers. They saw people like us, yeah. right? For now, right now, all they see is soldiers, yeah. and all we see are workers or terrorists. Yeah, sucks. Really, really sucks. Because like, I mean, workers I are personally, fine. <laughs> right? No, I personally, most of my interactions with Arab people, thank God, are have workers. Been fine. Yeah, workers, workers, workers are just like a, just or just yeah. like a guy in the street, yeah, like yeah. doing his own thing, yeah. you know, like trying to live. Like one of the craziest and things that cool, since you know, since moving to Israel, especially with the recent wave of terrorism that we had, was like waking up every day, opening up my window, and seeing traffic. Why? Because it's like as crazy as things get here, people still need to wake up in the morning. Life goes on. People need to work. Palestinians need to work. Jews need to On work. The other side, it hurts we a we bit all, though. of course, no, it yeah, hurts deeply. But the point it is, we're so desensitized yeah. to, yes. the, to, 100%. The, to the to the terror. One hundred percent. But the point he's trying to make, I think, is because like if you wouldn't look at the news, like ninety percent of the people that is us and like other Palestinians on the other side, they they go to work. They don't go stab a Jew in the face. Right. It's, uh, right. Uh, it's like you know, and it's like we don't want them to make assumptions about us, uh, about us, and we don't we shouldn't make assumptions about them. But it's like at the end of the day we all want to like bring food to the table feed our kids yeah. grow as people like you know it's and and it's sad that we're at this point and it's like you feel you see news like today i saw news about how israel and saudi arabia are basically about to come out fully 
right? That they're, they're coming out of the closet, both of coming them? out of the closet of cooperation. <laughs> and June, uh, it's a good time. <laughs> you know, commercial flights are going to go over Saudi Arabia. There's going to be a trade agreement, uh, like for the for the Straits of Tehran. And you look at those news, and you're like, oh my Drugs god, trafficking is like, going to be okay. This is crazy. This is crazy. Like Medina used to have Jews. Like you're talking like like Muhammad used to love his used to love his Jews until they rejected him. Yeah. Right. That's in the Quran. Yeah. And like. When you, you look at Morocco and like the holiness of some of the places in Morocco and you look at like, you know, places in Libya and Algeria and Iraq, obviously Iraq is far from it, but, but like you, you're seeing these places slowly become closer to, to well, us uh, and make peace. And yeah. then, but then the people that are here that are our neighbors, we can't even look at them in the eye. Yeah. So it's like, you feel like we're so close, but we're so far away from like Mashiach times. My, my one thing with this is that if we were to embrace the waterfall, if, you want water? A little bit, yeah. If we were not the uh, Moroccan water. Not as well as well. If we were to embrace, we could have some Moroccan water too. Torah and mitzvah, um, right? If we like, we can get some Russian water next. Let's get some Russian water. <laughs> a lot of the things that like a lot of these problems, right? But a I chaser. Th I think comes out of the fact that again, like if you're do if if you're more if your morals and your and your like the Constitution, right? What makes mm -hmm. America so powerful? Mm -hmm. There's a Constitution. Mm -hmm. No one's touching that, right? Mm -hmm. No, we hope. Uh, we hope, right? But no one's touching it, right? Good, bad, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's there. It's survived over two hundred years. It's there. And Historically, it's a backbone, it make, doesn't make any sense. Right? It's a backbone. Yeah. So America is has that backbone of the Constitution, and right. it's one of the things that we have to like praise America for is that, right. that actually they set up it's one of the mitzvot yeah. of B'nai Noach real freedom of speech up. real freedom of expression yeah. and you're religion. gonna have a gun why? because the government might turn on you that's literally what's written right. in the law not from enemies you can have a gun because the government might turn on you this is good things right? Mm -hmm. so they have a backbone now with that oh. you should probably make uh, I need to do a brach on this forget you should it. probably separate it first yeah. separate it I forget this is wine at the end of the day i mean not wine yeah, yeah. Grapes. Make a geffen. here just pour it in here make a this geffen. break is brought to you by There's kedem no, grape no, no, juice no, 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 no. Bro, there is oh that's arak ah. silly goose um <laughs> this break is brought to you by kedem grape juice kedem you have to you drinking vodka you should now? totally sponsor I, I was just the two arak arak in the pod. You it in there. <laughs> i don't know you brought uh, it this I, is I, some great grape arak juice is, uh, but it's from america so it's get from this america um but uh kedem this is your opportunity to sponsor the two chasses in the pod <laughs> Two hours later. We love you, Kedem. Mm. Is um, that the same? So wait, what just happened? Um, I was gonna give you a <laughs> cup here. You combine my water with the arak. He has cups. He has like two cups and a beer. I, I had a. I had a water. water but I had a water. water. <laughs> I had a water cup, and I thought there was vodka. In We're here. trying to get more brachas to happen. There is vodka okay. in that cup, right? I get you want to be a good host, but get him a new cup. I will get him a new cup. Just let him make a boy pregeffen. He can do whatever he wants with his juice. Amen. Now I can combine. You're gonna put the vodka with the juice. That's what you. Of you're course, doing. that was the whole point. Go ahead. Oh my gosh. Little chaser. You want to add I'll more? I'll take my cup back. You want to add more? Sure. That's good. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kitsu, America has the backbone, right? There's this backbone, and when we have the backbone, Delicious. then we have clarity. But the second we give up on the backbone, then we don't really know where we are. So that's part of the issue I think that we have here too. And it's also like how the section, Arab... We drink too much in this episode. It's <laughs> also how the Arab, the Arab world works, right? We have to understand who we're dealing with. Right. We're not dealing... Right? Just like Jew Judaism and democracy doesn't go together, and it does not go together. Mm -hmm. It does not go together. We do have rules of majority rules in Judaism and stuff like that, but it's not the majority of citizen it's a democracy the word itself makes no sense no democracy no real democracy exists because a real democracy would be chaos exactly the right. people can't have direct vote yeah. exactly it doesn't exist anywhere that's what john you adams have republics. yeah that's what thomas Jeff and, that's what thomas jefferson feared yeah. and john adams wanted and and thank god john adams this is why in the first place i never got politics because when people say democracy i didn't see how we were living democracy it was just a few elected people it's all shaker kids Anyway, but yeah. but, so to, but if we don't recognize that we're dealing with Arabs, that not only do they also never will align with a democratic government, they also work according to monarchies, right. but they're also a people with a strong, strong, strong sense of respect and fear. And these two principles 
are extremely strong in the Arab culture. And locality, right? Like their tribal, tribe, their tribal, clan. Tribal, right. their area. They'll fight another Arab family with full-on gunfires. You hear this if you go to Hebron and Janine and all these cities. I've witnessed it with my eyes. Right, no, you stand there as an IDF soldier and you watch two families kill each other and you don't get involved because I'm here to protect the Jews and there's two Arabs going at it. Mabruk. Breaking you, the silence. Yeah, may you both be good, right? Nah, they're fighting between them. We have no business to get involved. That's between them. No, not police. Are we, are we running at... Three hours? Maybe? No, it's a, a one hour, 45 minutes. It just starts at one. And then goes. Okay, so, so if we don't recognize who they are, we're going to keep shooting ourselves in the foot. And if we think right. we're dealing with a regular Western nation, we're not. And they respect, they respect a Jew being a Jew. That's what it was also back in the day in the peace times, right? Pre-Oslo, mm. the before Jew peace. was a Jew, right? I when, love that quote. B- oh, before wait, peace. before peace. Ah, but it's like That's sarcastic. That's the quote, sarcastic. It's yeah, like, because Oslo is supposed to bring peace. So it's like we're talking about. Oh, you're talking about before peace. When it people, might be Gil Hoffman. When Jews He's a, and Arabs actually used to live together next to each other, in the door right? Door. We used to see each other, That's right? Where right. we lived in Gaza, or go to meals together. Right. That was the reality. My dad lived here in Israel, in, right? And he went through the Lebanese war, and he went and like in Lebanon, this, you had Arabs driving you and giving you I have rides to find back out to who Israel. Did this quote again? If you're watching, you know who did the quote of like Oslo before peace. I don't think it was Oslo kind of levy, but I still am happy to give him a shout out because he's an amazing author. <laughs> he wrote a whole book about in, called Into the Garden of Eden when in the '90s when he could go. But before the first, uh, right after, the, right after the first intifada, I think he like he was like, I'm going to meet the non-Jews of this country. Mm. I'm going to go into their homes. I'm going to eat at their tables. I'm going to go into their mosques and into their churches, and I'm going to meet these people, and I'm going to tell them about me, and I want to hear about them, because he's like, and he called it into the Garden of Eden, because like, and I've spoken to this about different people. I don't know if we ever had this conversation, but it's like, Judaism need couldn't have ever globalized the idea of oneness. Right, we were always going to be small, and we were always going to, right. We needed Islam and Christianity to emerge mm-hmm. in order to spread this to billions of people, because no, no, in no way would there be billions of Jews, right? So, to an extent, this is again, Rashid Gilatenu. You're talking about this idea of oneness. It had to happen this way. We had to have these religions created. So, Yossi Klein Alevi sat down in a time where you could go, where you could travel around Yehuda Shomron, and you could go to Gaza. And he like he became really really close with a Sufi Muslim. I don't know how much you know about Sufism, like but Sufism is basically the like of it's Islam. the it's the Kabbalists of Islam, and and historically they've been they've had the best relations with with Jews in the Arab world and in Israel. Because they're most uh, educated about because the they they probably. fully they fully see past it. They see your soul. Mm-hmm. They see your neshama. They do these dances, these prayer dances, cool where they just go like Allahu Akbar. But, and they go and they do it in circles and they're just like and and they're and they're dancing and you, you literally the Hasidim of the Muslim he, world. yeah exactly and and he and, <laughs> he, cool. and he describes this these Sufi rituals where it was it was very it was crazy for him he literally did one in Gaza and it was crazy that he was there and they were like a little iffy about it but then in the end they some of them accepted him some of them didn't and it was like a whole thing and he and he and he writes so well and he literally writes about like a a, a level of yihud in that circle of like these people right we can we can pray in a mosque you yeah, can't pray in a church, wrong. right? Yeah, because yeah. because there's, there's like a yichud to Allah and and everything and some of the things that they believe. So it's like, um, it was it was refreshing to read, and it's and it's sad because the book sort of ends in a world where that still existed, mm. right? That reality that we could, and we still can. You can go to I'm sure you can go to Yerushalayim, yeah, or you can go to Lod, mm-hmm. you can go to any of these mixed cities, and you can meet some of these people, and you can get invited. But at the end of the day, they're not going to be. You're not going to be mamash a palestinian it's going to be an israeli who happens it's going to be an arab who like maybe he's palestinian descent but it's like there's no way you're meeting a palestinian that doesn't happen anymore yeah. you know what i mean and it's like because you'll get lynched unfortunately it sucks enter it's sad area. and it's like and it, it, like, but also, if we do that, like, like for like example, I don't want to be scared of them, and I don't want them to be scared. And you know what? Like, I'm just, you know, I'm just, just sharing. No, thoughts. Sorry, it's, it's. Yeah. Listen, it's important. I also came when I moved to Israel. My best friend, shout out to Russell. Uh, my, fr- my best friend oh, growing up is friend. is a uh, from Bangladesh, right? Muslim kid, right? Mm. But we grew up together like this: the Jew boy and the Muslim, and kid. The Muslim kid, right? And we're very, very close. Baruch Hashem, we're still in touch, right? But. When I came here, I came here like, hey, my best friend's Muslim, it's all fine and dandy. Over 12 years, it's been made very right. clear to me, not by my actions, right. but by their actions. That it, and Politics. That's, politics. No, I'm not talking politics. But I'm saying it's the politics that you never had. You never had. It might be. Yeah, they're saying the, poli- the from politics. The, po- the, the, thing, the thing here is that politics 
can't allow us to see each other as followers of Hashem, followers of Allah. Oh, it's the same thing. But with that said, we right. also can be blind. Like, we have the ideal of, listen, you're Ishmael, we're Yaakov, you know, like, we should be, we should, that I love it. Can't be naive. We can't but be we naive. We cannot be naive. 100%. We are dealing with a lot of terrorists. And if they're yeah. not terrorists, they're cousins of them, they're brothers of them, they're siblings of them. And I'm not talking all of them. Right, right, right. But there are, there's an extreme loyalty in the Arab world. Totally. And no one is snitching on their cousin when they know they're going to go out and do a terrorist attack. Yeah. It is extremely, extremely rare that that happens. There's extremely a grassroots rare. issue. There's a grassroots yeah. issue that they keep it in. And whether they're politicized or not, they're extreme or not, we're dealing with an enemy. We can't forget that. Whether they're brainwashed or not. We're, we have to protect ourselves. I know. Before everything, we have to take care of ourselves. The ideals are great. But the more I've lived here, the more I see it that not only is this a war that goes back to literally Yitzchak and Ishmael. And, Ishmael. and the, before that, Sarah and Hagar. Right. This is the mothers. Like, it started the mother. And the Ramban says, amazing Ramban. The Ramban says, because of how Sarah acted in that situation, and only the Ramban, or Rishon, he's one of the only people that goes and says when the Avot did something wrong. It's very even hard for me to say it, right? But the Ramban says, because of the way Sarah Imenu acted with Hagar and Ishmael, we're going to pay for it. Day, yeah. He said this nearly a thousand years ago. Well, we were paying for it then too during the Crusades. Right? Nechon. We live in the 1100s. Yeah. So, like... Endless issues. <laughs> we're going comes. through this, right? But the thing is, now, now, now let's be real. Shalom is not peace. Shalom is shleimut. It's, it's wholeness. Yerushalayim. If I'm not going to be me... Oh, this is good. I love how everything's connecting. connecting. If, if I'm not going to be me, if I'm not going to be my whole self, right? If the heart is not willing to be the heart, but the heart wants to be the foot, mm. and the liver is trying to be the brain. Wait, you said this recently in your, in your, in your been, classes, maybe. The things don't you started know. sharing about. But it could be, but Sorry. that's exactly yeah, the continue, Indian, continue. right? Yeah, yeah. If we don't recognize who we are as Amisa, this is our yeah. land. If we don't own it and if we don't treat it that way. Right. If we don't read Sefer Yoshua that literally every nation, every nation that was living here was warned. Sefer Yoshua is like the tweets that cancel us because it's like, it's literally genocide. It's like, yes. It, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's war. It's war. Right. Yeah. War is not always genocide. There's sometimes rules to war. No, no, I know. Here's I know. a warning. It, no, so it, wasn't, it wasn't genocide, but you're talking about like, God was like, Oh no! If, you don't the city, if they don't accept, wipe yes, them out. Yes. Right. Because here's tough, a fair yeah. warning: get out. This is our land. Right. You don't want to leave. There's but no how many war. nations gave warnings in those days, huh? Exactly. Right. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> how many are. do them now? Now the problem is now yeah, that we give the warning. We still do a, them a week before. Then it wasn't, you know. It's not like, crazy when you see those videos of like Gazans getting a phone call. Yeah. That's insane. Or flyers. Or they're literally phone telling. Calls, they're flyers, literally telling radio, the enemy. They're literally telling the enemy they where on. they're going to hit. That's why there's always a perfect shot. Do you know? Do you, you know that, right? That's why there's always why there's... a perfect shot for social media. Is because yeah, yeah, people I know in Gaza. Steps. Yeah, it's good to find them. No, I think it's like first they call them, then it, they yeah. put pamphlets. They, they hack yeah, the radio. Door, then, right, they knock on the door. They hack the radio. What else? What's the fifth one? The bomb. They dropped the bomb on the roof. But right, but but that's also another reason that there's not a lot of targeted attacks because the second you let them know then Hamas goes and brings all the children in that's crazy as and now we want to be you know moral Israel we're not going to attack because you put children in the building and we love children but at the end of the day we're dealing yeah. with an enemy and look, this is Amalek right yeah. I'm not saying that they're Amalek but we go back to the Alachot of Amalek you kill their sheep <laughs> you kill their babies you kill their we can't yeah. Wait, we don't have the Salakhan nowadays. Because we don't know who no. Malik is. We are uh, like very it. soon out of time. It's all good. Ah, the computer's going to die. Is that the shame? Kitsu, That's fine. We went Let all him. over. You have anything to wrap up? One final wrap yeah. up. Let's do it. And, like it's, and it's he took over our podcast. And it's I like connected. This. I, like, I love yeah, this. No, this. Should I move great. to Spa? Let's do it. You know okay. who wants to move to Spa? Shout out to my friend Misha, who's joining the army. We wish him luck. Is that the other two? No, Misha, he is a friend from the Ulpan. Uh, from the UK. He was gonna come, but he got uh, no. He's from he's from Russia. Oh, he's not from. Uh, no, he's from Novosibirsk. Uh, yeah, um, he got COVID. He was gonna come this weekend. He could have been sitting right here watching this live. <laughs> could have had a live audience. It would have been cool. But uh, maybe he would have joined. Um, what was it? Where was I going with that? Um, no, you had one more question. Yeah, wrap it up. Wrap it up. Um, what is like? And we spoke about this last time, and it was one. I think it was the thing that I clipped. 
right? Hillel says that Torah is a Havad Yisrael, the rest is commentary, right? So, how do we get to the point? And remember, this you said this is one of the things that you were working on last year, of like, uh, when we asked, like, what's a mitzvah that you're working on? What's a mitzvah okay. that is hard for you? Um, what, uh, what can we do to get to that point of, like, a Havad Yisrael that's going to, like, bring Mashiach and, like, right, like, make all of this connected to the, what we've been talking about all night make all of this whatever this is israel or jews in brooklyn jews right wherever they are thriving um in west hollywood in florida shout out to that amazing community and river smith where, where i'm coming mm -hmm. from they're doing amazing things they're about to build a mikvah um wow. yeah it's incredible Two hundred fifty thousand dollar project and raise, they're raising the money right now it's amazing it's the first thing the jewish community is required yeah. to build when they move to a so what can what can we do from where we are wherever we are to like increase our halvat israel and let that be like the key that opens the door to mashiach mm -hmm. i mean like i said earlier i think most of, like we like to argue a lot <laughs> And we can argue for Kedusha, like in Gemara, like about Halakha, with like good vibes and like no personal issues. Unfortunately, it doesn't stay there often. And we're and if it's definitely, if it's not about Torah, but about different issues like politics, first of all, you should stop talking about politics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that would be a big improvement already. The like, Amalek. <laughs> maybe if we just take politics out of the picture, we already have Avadis, I don't know. But like, besides that. It happened in my house when we, when we cut out a Friday night dinner. Maybe well, just so that, but also, just like put aside your differences and your ego because the the difference of the ego is very connected to like oh like but i need to be right about this thing like maybe you don't have to be right and e even if you know you're right like if you know it doesn't work like you say maybe just don't talk about it right whether it's politics or something else and Did also you, we have everything to, in its time and its place everything. yeah but we also have to emphasize the point that i like that by the way put aside the ego put aside the eye the rabbi talks a lot about that this right? is this is the nikuda yeah, that sure. we like can't Tanya, forget that the like, jew is yeah. the jew is a spark of hashem mm -hmm. so his body is this his situation where he's coming from the fact that he's a reform leftist this Doesn't that matter. if he's a yid i can very well not approve of his actions mm -hmm. right i don't approve of his actions but he's a jew when it comes to him at his core i love him like my brother i'm willing to die for him he's not according to all the books and all the teachings that we have in the past even further. Years, who are but... you to not approve it's like his business at the end of the day you have free choice and he can do whatever you want but he could but no but we can't like for example like a person outright against hashem that we're against and i'll never support you and that right of course but you as a yid yeah. now, and and i and it also could be that logically and spiritually i should not be hanging out with him and i should distance myself from him mm. but i love him but for example, if you have someone that doesn't keep shut, it's not your business. You, we at certain point didn't no, keep shut. I'm not talking about that. But I want to mention that. I know you're not talking. I'm about saying that. if you have a yeah. I just want to mention it. I know you're not talking about this. I know you're talking about more like more severe things, like mamash against Hashem, like rebelling, and then that's out of the picture. Obviously, you have to kind of do something about it. But like most cases, like you'll have people that like okay, their view about life is a bit different. They're they're like their observance is more or less, and like. That's not our business, and often we like in our head, like, oh, they have to be exactly like us, and like, right. Right? no, just just one mitzvah a day, right? Isn't that yeah. what Rambam says? Yeah. Just do do one good mitzvah, one per mitzvah perfectly a day, and, and that's gonna lead to school the mitzvahs. Like that's gonna lead to other yeah. mitzvahs, and it's just like that's what I tell people sometimes. You know, I don't really have that many conversations about like, you know, coming back to Yiddish guy, but sometimes it'll come up, and 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 like if if I have any advice again, not coming from a place of like. Like, there's a lot I struggle with, but, but from it's your like, experience, too. yeah. Do what like one thing, but if I show one thing that I do perfectly, is it still recording? Well, okay, here it is. is. Not the audio. Not the Speak audio. Up. Speak a bit louder, and yeah. that way. What I do recommend. <laughs> well, I want to wake up the kids. Okay. I can do this. Yeah, vlog time. Vlog time. What I do recommend uh, for people is like find that one thing that you connect with. For me, it was to fill in, like I mentioned at the top of the show. Putting on to fill in on Israel 2.0, shout out to Rabbi Berg and Aish. Um, I haven't missed I haven't missed a day of Tefillin since the end of 2016. Like, so I was thinking about it today, like it's so crazy to hear, you know, sometimes you you know, maybe at night you do certain things that are not aligned with like who you are when you put on to fill in, but at the end of the day, no matter what, 
Like you wake up in the morning, you put on tefillin, you think Hashem, you meditate. That's my mitzvah, the shleima. Like that's my like the the mitzvah that I and and a lot of things have come from that, right? Because then maybe you'll go to shacharis and you meet someone at shacharis and you start learning with that person. Maybe that person teaches you about kashrut and you start keeping kosher. And maybe that person introduces you to your wife, and then you have like a Yiddish, you know, the like, um, like, you know, it's like that's the one thing I would uh, recommend. Um, and Bezerat uh, Hashem, you know, whoever maybe this will help somebody that's listening or watching. And uh, I hope it continues to help me and guide me and. Whatever it is, the the mitzvot that you guys do perfectly, or the mitzvah that you guys do perfectly, or, you know, I encourage you to do it. Maybe that's what's gonna lead us to to answer my question about the havat Israel. Like, you know, because when you're doing these things, you become a little more conscious. Um, you know, maybe some of the people I grew up with might be like a little bit surprised that like you know where I'm at right now. And if you're watching this, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like. We all have a journey. We all have a person. We all have a, a purpose, a passion, and it's just a matter of um, like being on that, like being there, like just being there in the process. Like today, three buses it took me like five hours to get here, but at no point, except for when I was stuck in traffic and I was hungry, but at no point where I was other than that one. <laughs> Looking at restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just like, why are we? Stuck? Why did you go through Rosh Hashanah? Why did you go up the hill? <laughs> Um, I know when I was just like, like, wow, I hate, I'm so angry right now. Like, I didn't let, like, that, that's been, like, that, that, like, it didn't happen because, like. Didn't get to you. Yeah. Like, I should work on know, that more. This right, is like, the whole idea, though. This is the Abbat Israel. Everything that mm -hmm. we were talking about, right? Everything that we mentioned since you asked that question, it's all aligned. And what we mentioned before, the more we focus on what our eyes see, the externalities of this world, the more we get into the externalities of this world. I'm like this, he's like that, he wore that shirt, and he wore that t-shirt, that means this. The more we're looking at the external things, the more we're there. The more we tap into the reality that everything is Hashem, the more we're there. So, Avat Yisrael, the Jew does whatever he does, and, but, uh, but I know he's a spark of Hashem. Right. I can't hate that. And to link what you, Avidan, said, I can flip the camera if you want, if you want to talk <laughs> about it for a sec. But it's it's a Chabad idea. And again, like I, I consider myself a Chabadni because if it wasn't for Chabad, it happened right when I was born. You definitely look like Chabadni parents, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, already. My parents became about the Yeah, it actually with, looks like the Rebbe. My about the with, like right when I was born. I never, like my, my older siblings went to McDonald's in Venezuela. I never went to McDonald's. And right now, I'm like the most observant in my home. You're the mayor. You brought the light, bro. You brought the light to the family. Um, Follow but, him. But 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 but, <laughs> but, to, but but to connect what you just said, it's 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 also about bringing the physical down, right? And infusing the physical with yeah, the spiritual yeah, and right. making this a home for God, because or else what what are we doing here? Why do we even exist? Why did I wake up one day and start having memories? It doesn't make any sense, right? And it's like, and then, and, and, and the reason, it, it, because when you started learning these things, right, and, we, and, and you guys sort of opened me up to this idea when we had the Lag Bomber special, what is Lag Bomber? It's the revealing of the Yisod, it's the revealing of the secrets, right? And for a very long time, this was only within basically the elite, right? The rabbis, Rabbi Shem Moriachai, and these people, only them knew about it, and that's why he was in a cave, and he came out, and he burned somebody with his eyes, because it was like, Oopsie. it was too much, right? <laughs> And it's like, but then now it's like, we can put it into books and we can learn it and we can talk about it on this podcast and we can, and we can do all these things because it's like, we've, it's, it's come down and it's, and it's found a home literally in the city and literally across the valley in mm -hmm. Iran. So this is the point. may we bring, continue to bring down the spiritual into the physical and infuse it back up up and down into a spiral and maybe tap into the moments Shavuot, Sukkot, Pesach, Purim, Chanukah Zman HaMashiach Bimhera V'yameinu Amen! Like and subscribe to Jewish History Guys, is that your uh, channel? Yes, That's yeah. my personal and then on this day in Jewish History and the two tall Jews And uh, we love you guys Don't forget to subscribe to us as well <laughs>